good evening and you're very welcome to the gold medal match in the women's EHF final four. It's Bucharest against Gyor. Surprise package maybe for a lot of people, Bucharest, but here they are. And you join us just for the opening ceremony. Beautifully done. And uh, sit back, relax and enjoy, and then we'll talk you through the teams. The game is due to start in about 15 minutes time.
dancers take a bow. Thank you very much for that uh, wonderful spectacle. The crowd certainly enjoyed it. The stadium goes into darkness once again because the gold medal match is only moments away. The last Romanian team to reach a final of the Champions League, Old Chumbats here, but they played V-Board in 09 and 010. It was the closest margin in qualifying, 55-53 against Rostov Don. Whereas uh, Gior, well, they absolutely trounced Ferencvaros. And when it came to the actual final, well, Gior had the second best attack in the Champions League for women, the second best defense. Whereas Bucharest had only the fourth best attack and the third best defense. Does that matter at all? Well, I think yesterday Gior showed that they actually have the best defense in the Champions League. The performance they had yesterday to beat Budućnost 21-20 was absolutely outstanding. And Bucharest cruised to a 27-21 victory over Varder. And if you missed it earlier, Varder won the bronze medal 30-28 in a, a very open game. I don't know how important it was for both teams, but in the end it was Varder. I mean, Budućnost tried to win it. But uh, it was open, it was a uh, good handball play. It was really, really a great handball match to watch with lots of excitement, lots of great goals. And let's really hope that this final lives up to its billing. The two referees today are from Norway, Kirsti Arnsten and Gunnarun. And uh, the Gior team is just waiting to be announced. They have met earlier in the season. Gyor won home and away, 24-22, they won in Gyor, and uh, away in Bucharest, Gyor won again 28-22. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday we said the same thing about Varder, who had won twice against them, including a five-goal victory in Romania. Didn't seem to bother the Romanian team, they came roaring out of the block, 7-1 at one stage, eventually increased to 22-11, and... Uh, well, they just cruise to victory, but they won't cruise, or they shouldn't cruise against this Gior team. The only thing that can maybe beat them today could be overconfidence. Nedlikova, followed by Alstad, followed by Loke, then Hudak comes in. Pars Falvi, an arm in a sling, but she's not missing this game. Then Gurbitz, Kovacic, Sulan, Lakatos, Amorim coming in now to the acclaim of the crowd. Then Orban, Grot, Brok, Eva Kiss. All coming on to tremendous applause. This crowd really adores this pure team. The entire stadium just about on its feet. And as I look across, every Romanian fan that has come waving the Romanian flag is cheering or at least clapping on this pure team. So they're there. We are here. And we're just waiting on Bella Goulden and Co. to make their way onto the court. And here they come, and the Romanian flags start to fly on the far side of the arena. Flag of the Women's EHF Champions League, there on the left, of the EHF on the right, the two referees in the middle, and Bella Goulden, a big smile, look at it. Can they really believe that they're here? That is an amazing, amazing, turnaround to the season, followed on by Kudea, then Rodriguez Jorgensen, Jordash. Here comes Varzalu, Bazalio, Bradeanu, Torstensen. Now a good, uh, good core of the players from this team are from Romania. Number 20, just gone out of your picture there, was Martin. 22 then is uh, Manea. Then Fisker with the headband, always with that headband when she plays. World champions on this team, cup winners, cup winners on this team. 
They've won medals and uh, they know what it's all about. But uh, when it comes to playing at the Pop Plaza Arena, do they know what it's like to play against Gior? Champions here from two years ago. Didn't make it last year, Gior. But here they are again, ready to take back the crown that they won twice in consecutive seasons in 2013 and 2014. There they are, smiling away. Soland, Nicky Groot, just there on the left, Brock beside her. And then, of course, Grimsby, the goalkeeper. Very similar sounding goalkeepers today. Grubasic is the goalkeeper for Bucharest, and Grimsbo the goalkeeper for Dior normally. But that's Pessoa there at the end. She'll be off to Varga at the end of the season. Fisker then, as you move along the line. Kudea, Basalio. Two goals yesterday, 18 years of age. Bianca Basalio, and already she's in a Champions League final, and she's probably thinking, ah, this is easy. But you can be sure it really isn't. So the Champions League anthem plays. Everyone stands for it. And here comes the Hall announcer with the final announcement. It's the uh, fair play announcement. Well, they move along. Gurbic trying to... And the fair play announcement is read by Edith there. And here is the Bucharest team. Who are you looking out for? Number four, Guggen, for sure. Rodriguez, number nine. Jorgensen, number 10. Uh, and on the line, Manea, number 22. Would also look out for Torsensen and Bradeanu, 15 and 17, who are very, very strong defensively. And, of course, Grimsburg and goal, number 85. And there he is, Kim Rasmussen. The coach of Bucharest and has done a great job to get them this far. Giori Auto, uh, Audi Eto. Let's just call him Gior, shall we? Heidi Loka, number five, super player. Nick Grove, number 27. And then, <coughs> pardon me, Amorim, of course, a uh, big star, coming back from a major knee injury. Not at her all time best, but certainly a player they have to watch out for. And there he is, also coach of Hungary, Ambrose Martin. And he really, he really has this team ready to go. They're playing from left to right, all in green. Grubasic, there she is, 87, and Grimsbo, 85, almost the same number. And uh, close to having the same numbers yesterday. Top class performances from both. And then they've gone for two centre players. Bella on the left, Nikki on the right. Two wonderful, wonderful players. Nikki Grote, 28, Bella Gulden, 26, and as I said, Arnsten and Rune from Norway are the referees for the gold medal match. It's Bucharest versus Gior, and we want to wish the two Norwegian referees a really, really good game. And uh, they've known for a while, and if you're following Twitter, follow them. They're, uh, they're an interesting pair. They always have uh, great things to say, and uh, I'm sure you can find them on Twitter. It is going to be... Bucharest from right to left, all in black with the white trim. And they're going to start with, uh, as you would expect, Martin in the right wing, then Jorgensen, then Bradeanu Torsensen in the center block, then Manea playing on the left side, number two position, and Fisker on the left wing. And it is Grubasic in goal. Orban gets the nod in the right wing for Gior. Sulan in the right back. She didn't play yesterday. Nikki Grote in the center. Amorim in the left back. Back on the left wing is Kovacic. And on the line, Heidi Loka gets a shoulder already from Torsten, Torstenson. Nikki Grote, little switch of Amorim. Double switch. Sulan, she's not a one for shooting from nine meters. Ball is recycled well. Amorim goes up. Easy save. But a foul on the way through, and the ball comes back out for a nine-meter ball, which Heidi Loka will take. So nice recycling of the ball from Gior, but nothing major happening just yet. Sulan, not the one you're going to expect to shoot from nine meters. Groth goes up, block is easy. Torsensen looks, doesn't see Fisker. Fisker's gone. Brock makes her way into the middle. Sulan is off. 
Torstensen stays in the left back position. Off comes Bradianu, on comes Bella Golden to the acclaim of every Romanian with a Romanian flag and a Romanian hat over on the far side. Jorgensen. Ball is so fast from that they really, really, it's clinical the way they pass the ball. Opens up Martin off the post. All the fan over that goes over the end line. No goal. But it opened up for them there. Hammered in. Ball tries to play it through, hits Jorgensen on the foot. Comes out to nine meters. Two Norwegians having a little word. I wonder was it in Norwegian? Of course it was in Norwegian. But they understood each other anyway. Grot, Amorim, Suland. Here comes Orban, now moves in second line, but the ball is reversed out to Suland. Now to Amorim, the big arm. No, not this time. Blocked and over the end line by a, com a combination of Jorgensen and Bradianu. And two minutes gone, no goal. But uh, the defence of uh, Bucharest looking good. Oh, nice play, Amorim. Referee doesn't like it, nine meter ball. Comes back over this side again. Or over that side, I should say. Amarim just takes it, nobody moves. Now Loka back in the middle, Suland, ooh. Planeano could have stepped out and won that one. And there's a bit of something going on in the middle and it's a yellow card to Torsonson. Not surprising actually, she gave uh, Heidi Loka a little nudge on the way through initially and uh, now a yellow card for whatever pushing, shoving. Heidi Loka's a real handful in there, but she's got to be, she says, because uh, most of them in there are bigger than her. But she was raised with five brothers, she said, in the media call. Up goes Suland, easy save, Grubasic, ball breaks, Bradeanu, Mane is gone, Torstensen, look at Jorgensen, back from a knee injury too, Bradeanu, Torstensen, no change, look at the hole, look at the way Loka takes her on, steps out, Referee is a little worker to explain that uh, she's got to be a little bit calmer. Close up of uh, Rasmussen right in front of me. Gruden back on, Bradianu off. Manea goes to the far side. Here comes Jorgensen. Up she goes. Great save, Grimsburg. And the ball breaks. It's absolutely breakneck speed at the moment. Amorim, oh, ball around the corner. Loka could have turned one way, then turned the other. But whatever way she turns, she scores one to nothing. Ball, Amorim, Loka. Many times have you seen it around the corner. Turns Martin. No chance, Grubasic. First blood is to Gior. Hoiva Gior is uh, reverberating around the uh, arena. Jorgensen. Martin, no ball to Goulden. Goulden! That's nice handball. And Bella Goulden adds another one to her. Scores for the Champions League this season. Nice, nice goal. That puts her on 94. Three behind Ekaterina Elena for the top scorer and equal with Niagu on 94. So what a piece, four goals. So a little competition within a competition here for Bella Golden. Or could we say Bella Golden? Because that could be the case at the end of the game. Apologize for the point, of course, I've been working on it all night. Loka, Sulan, Bradeano this time does step out high. Now moves away back in, but look at Loka finding that space. Ball, Amarim, Sulan, great uh, parallel pass, but they've got to bring it back. Hand is going to go for passive play now, any second. Ball over to Loka again. Save, save. They let her shoot, and she uh, didn't get it past Glubasic. Martin, Martin, Jorgensen, look at the speed. The ball is moving. The speed, the attacks are going, counter-attack, counter-defense, and, well, nerves are go-go. Goalkeepers on top of the jewels at the moment. Let's see how long that lasts. They must be tired after yesterday's exertions. Maybe not so much. Look at Torstensen go. Poor ball to Jorgensen, but she's fouled. Play on, sister referee. No, now it is. And the ball moves on. Look at Loka out high on Goulden. And Luke Goulden goes in, and brilliant! Loka switched off for a split second. And suddenly, Bella Goulden is at 95. And she switched off. Bella Goulden ran, ran past her. And uh, now look at Jorgensen out on Amorim. Great goal, Bella Goulden broke past Loka. Loka just for one second switched off. And the double pass found Bella Goulden in space to score at a 2 1 lead for Bucharest.
throat. High comes Bradianu. I'll tell you, that uh, Jorgensen girl is no wilting violet. She's out there and she's toughing it out with Amorim at the moment. Suland, Groot. Suland, oh! Off the crossbar and post together. Kovacic drops it and looking to get the rebound. To be honest, Martin could have picked it up. Just took her eyes off the ball. Groot, Amorim, Amorim. Oh, lovely ball to Loka. That's super play. Looked like Amorim could have uh, taken steps there. The referee let her away with it. And at the moment, it's the uh, Bella Gould and Heidi Loka show. Won a Swede. Won a Norwegian. Both Scandinavians, one of the heart, uh, one of the strongholds of handball in Europe. So Gulden Jorgensen, Torstensen in the left. No Rodriguez just as yet. Fisker goes! Oh, what a shot! Little Fisker out of nothing in nine metres. No one came to meet her. She thought, I'll have a pop here. Comes back off the post. Ball breaks to Groot in this attack. Amorim Kovace! All season long. She's been doing that, and she makes no mistake this time. Nice goal, good recycling of the ball again by Bjorn. Goal down to a goal up. Seven minutes, 23 seconds gone in the game. Nothing, nothing between them. Bella Goulden calls the move. Well, to be honest, after yesterday's game, we really needed something, uh, some excitement. Oh, nice ball again, Goulden over the top, does it make it to Martin? It does, but uh, almost. But uh, the referee had caught a nine-meter ball, realizing it wasn't going to quite reach her. After the, the well, I, I don't want to say boredom of yesterday, because the, the first game was a tight defensive game, but it wasn't a beautiful game to watch, and the second one just wasn't uh, a competitive match at all. Uh, Jorgensen hit the way up with good defending. We needed some good games, and today the first game was really, really enjoyable. And this one here is worthy so far of a gold medal match. Amor in with the ball. Oh, she's taking steps, the referees call it this time, but they want the ball back where uh, the steps happened. And she could have been called on the goal for Loka, and the referee saw it that time, but. Uh, not moving 100% freely, Amorim. Just it's a little bit different. You can see it. Maybe not 100% confident in the knee just yet, but certainly a very effective player. Scored the goal that really clinched it yesterday for Gyor when they needed it, and made some really nice assists. Torstensen. Well, they tried to play it into Manea, but there was a foul on Manea, and uh, it was highly Loka. The referee saw it. The referee called it. Nine meter ball to Bucharest, which Maneo will take. Torstensen again, still no Rodriguez, goes against Heidi Loka, gives it to Fisker. Fisker can go nowhere except across. Bella Goulding goes up! And once she goes up, it's normally a goal. She's on 96, one short of the top goal scorer of the Champions League. But that's a beautiful goal. What a technique. Three to three. They're not going to be able to leave her on her own for long today. Someone's going to have to touch. Someone's going to have to hit her and hit her early because, uh, well, she'll punish you. Nikki Groot. Sulan, Sulan, tidy loca, penalty, no need. It's a great goal. It's a great goal. What a ball. Sulan, look at this. Beep. Oh, oh, that, how does she do it? She's already falling, and she jumps off the wrong leg, turns Mane at the same time. That is sensational. A little grimace, and then she's up. And then there's the face. That's what you want to see from Heidi Loka. Four to three. Ten minutes gone. Rodriguez on with Goulden. Torsenson off. She'll be kept for defense now. Here comes the move. Goulden moves in, second line. Now Rodriguez, one on one with Brock, but she's not going to get the freedom of the park she got yesterday. Great defending by Brock in there, held her up. Really good, really good defending. Goulden again with the ball. What can she do? Ball to Torsenson, Torsenson to Goulden, both of them being held. Nine meter ball. Great defending from Grote on Jorgensen, came out early, still 4 3. And the defense of Dior just started to ratchet it up and not. Look, it's a 5 1, almost a 4 2. And they've lost the ball. Here it comes, Nicky Grote. Heine Loka, save! Grubasic comes back.
back out to Groot. Where does it end up? Can't see. Off the post and a miss. It must have been Kovacic, was it? It was. Couldn't see the entire Bucharest uh, team was on. Look at this. Heidi Loka, save Grupasic, picks it up Groot, plays it quickly to Kovacic and off the post. The entire Bucharest team on their feet. So I couldn't see the player and uh, God help the poor cameraman trying to keep up with the play. He missed the two. It was Kovacic. It is 4-3. Martin on the little carousel on that side. Goes in second line. No, she doesn't. Tries to play it. Takes four steps. Drop the ball. Grimsbo. Grimsbo. Groat. Groat. So casual on the ball. Lovely pass. What a terrible shot from Orban. Really poor. I mean, at this level, bang it in and worry about getting the classy looking goals when the game is in the bag. She took a shot, Grubasic read it. Look at this. I mean, she's got time and. Oh. Great defending local coming back. Grubasic stands at uh, 184, but she looks taller when she's in the goal. I know that I need to do better there than to uh, just try and flick it over her. You know, so early in the game, 12 minutes gone. Way! That is great defending from Kovacic. He felt that as well. Jorgensen trying to get back. Kovacic still feeling the effects. Up goes Amorim off the crossbar. Jorgensen rebound to Martin. And Kovacic is really feeling that attacker foul. She's just managing to get the air back in her body. Bella Gould, and penalty, no goal. Bella Gould with four is now equal with Ekaterina Elena and I think that we are looking at the top scorer in the Champions League because you will be sure she'll get another chance there's another well 48 minutes left in the game she's bound to score another one at least and there will be penalties and therefore that means that she will get another another opportunity Amarim off it's uh, Alstad on it's Groot, Sulan, Sulan, that lovely pass she makes into Heidi Loka. Penalty, says the referee. She's so clever, she's like a battering ram. Just watch her movement here again. She gets hit, she turns, she has to turn back, then the head goes down and she kind of burrows through. Look, head is down, burrows through. I think she got a, she got a, a, a tasty one there from the referees. She was open for the shot, Sulan comes on, four to four. Golden with four. Sulan now with a chance to open her account. And does so versus Pessoa. Five to four. Three for Heidi Loka. But Bella Golden has scored all of Bucharest's goal. So at the moment it's five for Gior, four for Bella Golden. Fisker, Rodriguez. Bella Gould and Fisker goes down and he goes in second line. Look at the defence from Gior. Brock out, Groot out, that 4-2. Cutting off the avenues of attack before the players have even moved. Already, stranglehold. They've got to work hard to beat them. Brock, one-on-one -on -one with Bella Gould. Rodriguez now hits, attacker foul. Brilliant defending. Two on two. And it was... Knedlikova over there. Oh, poor ball from uh, Alstad to... Oh, she's hit in the air. Nothing, says the referee. Can't believe that. He can't believe that. Ball breaks. Groth gets back. It's Knedlikova. Orban withdrawn. She got the hook after missing that easy shot. Bella Goulden tries to turn Brock. That is some battle today. Yvette Brock against uh, Bella Goulden. Jorgensen calls for the move it's Martin here she comes on the move yeah little switch again now she goes in second line ball to Goulden opens up again but saved this time nine meters is the referee just under pressure took a good shot needed to be a little bit higher or a little bit lower it was just a mid-range and uh, Grimsbo was able to make the save ball with Manea to Rodriguez to Goulden five to four Heidi Loka again, waiting for the run. Now she steps back in, two against two. And they've said, uh, well, I don't know what they said. Loka's not happy at the way they threw away the ball there. Mane is off, Rodriguez is off, Torsensen's on, and Bradianu's off. On. And I think a yellow card has just been given to Kim Rasmussen, and he's been told to, oh, well, he better be careful. And he's still having a word with the official. He's not happy about something. He's on a warning now, yellow card. And 
Kovacic is off. Well, I think she took a, a bit of a hammer blow with that attacker foul, and uh, she's just been given a chance to take a break. Gurevitz is on in her place. Still, Alstad, Grote, Sulan. Deep uh, is Knedlikova. Here she comes, the little rapper, and look at the speed, the double pass. Now the ball to Alstad. Could have gone for it. Now goes again. Sulan, oh, great save, Rubicic. Nice movement. Sulan can't believe it. He breath broth, uh, but she absolutely bangs Fisker over, I mean completely accidental, brilliant play Martin, penalty says the referee, great play Martin, put body on the line, broke through, and it's a seven metres as the referee, and Eva Kiss comes on, inside defending from Broch there, but, uh, and here, here she comes, small they call it, Kiss is sm uh, Hungarian for small, but she stands at almost one metre and ninety, Gulden to be top scorer. She is top scorer in the Champions League. Congratulations, Bella Gulden. Her fifth goal of the day puts her on 98. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, regardless of what happens in the rest of this game, Bella Gulden is the top scorer of the women's EHF Champions League for this season. So let's put that one to bed. Amorim all the way through. Great goal. Nah, Martin's looking for the attacker foul. Isn't going to get it. She came over late on Amorim. And Amorim, Amorim puts it in. Yeah, you can see she's already through by the time Martin comes over. Good refereeing there. Six to five, Gior. Up, boom, down. That's all it takes. No chance, Grimsbo. And Torstensen evens it up at sixes. Well, Rasmussen must be delighted. Six to six, 17 minutes gone. They're still in the game. Sulan, Grote, Grote to Amorim, Amorim to Grote. Poor pass, but uh, Sulan keeps it going. Gulden in trouble. Heidi Loka open in the middle. Sulan beat Gulden, and then Bralian, who found herself wrong side, and Loka gets her fourth of the game. Look at this. Beautiful. Torsonson's got to come across to help Gulden. And uh, once that happened, Loke, uh, well, she knows it was Sulan's goal, even though she's the one who put it in the back of the onion bag. Here comes Fisker. Now oh, they've lost it. Oh, they've lost it. That's a poor ball to lose. Ball to Broch. Oh, bump, bump it away. Yvette Broch puts it in. The crowd rise. A poor ball lost. Rasmussen calls a timeout. Look at Alstad. She just knows. Put it high. Rodriguez, no chance. Broch. Down at the standing leg of Grimsbo, or Grubasic, I should say. Listen, Time out, Bucharest. In the defense, we are beginning first, Anna, then Mika to go up too high. They are not scoring so much on nine meters. So seven and a half, eight meters, we stay close together so they don't get these open chances. In the offense, we need to see if we can get the timing. That means attack in higher speed against the defense so we can maybe win these battles. But they are moving up and down, so it's difficult. That's why I talked about these. It doesn't matter with this pass, that's what happens. But we need to work without the ball and put pressure and keep the ball moving. The line players move in open spaces. Girls, remember to go home. It's 8-6, don't worry. Come on. It's 8-6, don't worry. Best words of advice I've ever heard from a coach. 17, 18 minutes gone in the first half. It's only 8-6. What did uh, Ambrose have to say? Yeah, he's right. Let's move the ball. I mean, when they do that, they just look very, very good in fairness. Uh, that's a recorded timeout. The game is back on. 
Rodriguez moves to the right hand side. Jorgensen ineffectual today against Nicky Groot. Nicky Groot really is uh, quite a, a serious defender, but it's actually Alstad who's now gone into that position. It's a kind of a 5 1 defense, a little bit uh, offensive. Up goes uh, Martin. Bella Goulden into Manea. Manea, no chance. Two players marking her. One was Alstad, one was Loka. Now they step back to a 6 0. Uh, Broch and Amorim, look at the way they cut it off. They could, they make sure that Torsonson can only go one way. They push her down to the deck. They make her think she can only go to the left, and then they just narrow that three-on-three three so there's nowhere to go. Look at the eyes on Grimsby, focused on everything that's going on. 18-33 gone. Torsonson moves it to Bella Gould, and lovely ball into Manet. It's going to be a penalty if it's not a goal. It is a goal, and someone could be in trouble here. Someone is in trouble. It's uh, Yvette Broch who takes a warning for the team, but a nice goal, Manea. Look at this, turns, turns, makes the back for her. That's a great goal, good fight, and it's eight to seven. Look at her go. She's got it, she's nearly carrying the two of them into the back of the, into the six meter line with her. And uh, 19 minutes gone, yellow card for Yvette Broch, and it is uh, eight to seven, Dior. And we have a final, we have a final. Grote, Loka, Suland, Suland, Amorim, Amorim, Loke! Oh, that's beautiful handball! Five for Loke, made by Amorim. Look at this, Boop. There you go, and Torsensen, well, never even saw it coming. Neither did Bella Goulden, to be honest with you. Oh, that's lovely, that's lovely handball. Five goals. Well, she's got so much more space than she did yesterday, and it's really telling. Bella Goulden, Rodriguez, look how high Gurbitz is. The second line is in, now they have a chance, but it's a tacker foul, again, a great decision. It's absolutely the correct decision. She goes in with the shoulder, outside almost drops it, Amor in with the ball, goes one-on-one -on -one with Torsonson, and she, that's never an attacker foul, but you see them given all the time in women's handball. First one for sure, that one there, no chance. I mean, Amarim's got to go somewhere. She just brings her arm around, and uh, yeah, that's what happens. But they've got the ball back, and they're only two goals down, Bucharest. Torsonson, Golden to Rodriguez. Right-handed in the right back, Jorgensen ineffectual at the moment. Martin! Oh, she took steps for sure. Everyone's calling, including this commentator. But it doesn't matter, she broke through. Everybody fell asleep, including Yvette Broch in there. And that meant that it's uh, another goal back. Oh, Amorim's through, penalty and two minutes, Torstensen. Ooh, she's playing a dangerous game, Torstensen. Well, she's arguing with whomever will listen, but this is for sure a two minutes. Look at this, she's got her arm as she goes through. And uh, that just, that kind of fall at the end gets the seven meters and a good decision. Grubasic just uh, might have taken the ball in the cheek or the nose there on the way through. Fisker getting herself ready as the Libero went the penalty has been taken. In the meantime, Gurbitz, Grot, Brock, Alstad, and uh, everybody except Sula. And uh, Heidi Lok is, is there waiting and uh, I wonder will Sulan stay on now for the defense, maybe out on the right wing. It doesn't matter, we have a penalty to take, a two minute suspension coming up. Power play, power play for Gior. And here comes Sulan facing Grubasic. And she buries a big smile on the way off. And it is Kned Likova who comes on in her place. So second penalty for Sulan, uh, two from five. But she's played some nice, nice, uh, she gives balance to the team. Didn't play yesterday, for those of you who watched it. He went for a different uh, system out there in the attack. Realised that maybe for Sulan it might be a bit too aggressive, and uh, if they had won that game, she would be fresh as a daisy for today. Kudea, Gulden, Rodriguez, Fisker waiting, Broch against Gulden. Well, Broch's going to be in a little bit of trouble too, no. Referees figured that, that was just good uh, defending, but uh, I think she's on a warning, so she's got to be careful. Gulden, Fisker, Brock again. Now she's got to be in trouble for sure for holding. No, referee says again it's okay. 
Francisco comes off. They've decided uh, they've had enough of the Libero. Maneo with the ball, waiting for Goulden. Look at what's facing her. Three players. Now one on one. Rodriguez against Groot. Yeah, two minutes for Groot. Arm around the neck. Rodriguez's speed beats her. Absolutely correct decision by the referee. And uh, Nicky Groot takes uh, a two minute suspension for the team. So it's 5v5, and there you go, that's why. Correct decision. Good if it's helped her, but it was uh, too late at that stage. Golden Fisker. Rodriguez, Martin, poor ball from Rodriguez. Golden Fisker, Golden. Rodriguez is through. That's a penalty, and it could be another two minutes because she pushes her in the air there. That's two minutes for me, and a seven meters, but uh, maybe the referees felt that they couldn't send off two uh, your players in the space of 30 seconds, but uh, Gudovic absolutely nailed her. Here's Goulden again for another one, sixth of the day if she gets it. She does, you know. So it's the Goulden and Loka show at the moment, six for Goulden, from six attempts, five for Heidi Loka. And now they have to play five against five for the next 16 seconds. Bucharest player will come on very shortly. Knedlikova, Amorim, Heidi Loka goes in. Ball from Gurbic to Amorim. What will Gurbic do now? Stays where she is. Sulan, Amorim, Gurbic to Amorim. Oh, she's too free. Great save. Up goes Heidi Loka, but beaten by Rodriguez. Well, that was a fight for a ball, wasn't it? Heidi Loka stands at 177. Rodriguez at 172, and Rodriguez won the jump. Great save. Grubasic. Now, power play, 45 seconds for Bucharest. Bella Gulden was open. That's a brilliant ball. Brilliant save, Brimsball. Absolutely wonderful from the Norwegian in goal. And Martin will be disgusted because she's all open. That's a great, is a great save. The Spaniard couldn't beat her. Goulden, Rodriguez goes again. Oh, that's a lovely goal. Well, she can score from the left, she can score from the right. Doesn't seem to matter where she is. And it's 10-10. Well, if you thought that uh, you were going to walk away with this one, then you have another thing coming because uh, these guys are not going to lie down, that's for sure. Nikki Groot has finished her two-minute suspension, comes back on in the centre. Gulden comes out high on Sulan, but decides better and steps back in. Bradianu and uh, Torstensen keeping that uh, centre block tight. Now goes Gurbitz, now the ball to Groot. Look at the fight with Logan. Now the ball to Amorim. Back to Groot. Hammers up a passive play. Groot again. Up she goes. That's a terrible shot. She was banging them in yesterday. Ball breaks to Korea. But uh, Knedlico with a little dumpling. I think the, her name means. Or perhaps just dumpling. But let's call it a little dumpling. Is uh, the Czech player on the right wing. Great bit of covering back to win the ball. And Nikki Groot finally is put out of her misery in her... Uh, she's not playing the best game of her career today in the centre. Look at uh, that from Knedlikova. Coming back, <laughs> Korea kind of jumps as if to say, damn! Amorim, well, what is she doing? She's got to go there. Ball to Knedlikova. Now to Sula, now to Amorim. Still doesn't fancy it. And, yeah, she loses the ball. And uh, the referee is, she's travelled, the referee is saying. And Ambrose Martin is having a list, having a word with her, but uh, I think amorin has been doing that all day. She's just not confident enough to go through on her own. Let's see, does that change? Martin takes a little break, gets a high five from the coach. He seems to really have a nice spirit going in the uh, in this Romanian team. And it's Varzaru in the right wing. Oh, Torstensen fancies it. Gives the ball to Kudea inside. And there's two of them on the ground, Torstensen. And uh, Nedlikova, I think, or is it Alstad? Difficult to see from here. It's Knedlikova. She took a bang. Whoa! Well, poor Korea. what was she going to do there? There's nowhere to land. 
Well, she kills one of her own players, decides to go for the lob. Uh, referee decides she's inside anyway. And it's 10 to 10, four and a half minutes gone. Very even first half. Bella Goulden absolutely shining for Bucharest, but Rodriguez doing a good job too. But Bella Goulden with six. Heidi Loka shining for Gyor, but feeding off the balls of Amalim and Sulam, but still having to fight to score them. Now it's still Torsens and Bradiano in the centre. Here comes Gurbitz. What can she do? I'll start ball to Sulan. It's all moving but not going anywhere. Here's Kovacic now. What can she do? Ball to Sulan. Ball to Alstad. Back again. It's got to be hand for pass a play soon. Ball to Loka. How on earth does she do it? How on earth does she do it? Look at this. She's no right. She gets a ball. Back to goal. Jumping in the air. Manages somehow to keep her foot outside the six meter line. Oh, she's inside. Bad mistake from the referees there. Well, she shoots left handed, but she stepped on the six meter line. But it's 11 10 Gior. Rodriguez nailed again on the way through, but gets up, doesn't cause any fuss. Kovacic was the one who stopped her. Manea, Goulden, Torstensen, Goulden. Rodriguez, sidestep, ball out to Varzaru, comes back around, good recycling, oh, lovely ball! Oh, penalty after the save from Grimsburg. Let's have a look at that one again. Great ball into her, nice move of Manea. Well, Amarim's got a hold of everything, doesn't she? Let's her go, but too little, too late. And here comes Bella Goulden again. Can she score another one? Give her seven on the day of the 11. Here she goes. Ah, oh, no chance, Kiss. Well, got a touch to it, but not enough to keep it out. So seven goals for Goulden, six goals for Loka. A little uh, match within a match between those two players there. And Bella Goulden is just ahead. Of course, she does take the penalties. That's the difference. Heidi Loka doesn't. Loka covered by Bradianu. It's not enough. It's never enough in there. Here comes Kovacic playing in the centre. Alstad Sulan. Sulan Alstad off of the uh, Bucharest defence. Out for a corner. 11 11. They're so well drilled in the middle of that defence there. And they really don't have massive shooters, Gior, so they have to play it through and hope the defence can really win them the game. And right now, they're not... Oh, Summit's absolutely after getting nailed in there. Kovacic through. Now, there's something happened. Inside defending, the referee gave a penalty, but something else happened before that. And uh, I think the referee was caught out a little bit there and maybe gave the penalty, even though... I think Kovacic is all the way through. Ah, maybe Cure is inside, maybe not, but uh, she gives the penalty anyway. But something did happen before that that kind of made me wince. Pessoa comes on to face Suland again, and she doesn't know whether she wants to come out or stay in. That's Pessoa I'm talking about. Suland, uh, top corner. Third goal of the game for her. 12-11 Gior with uh, just under two minutes remaining. Torstensen, Goulden, Rodriguez, Varzaru, deep is Correa on the left-hand side. Coach is uh, rotating his squad. Rodriguez, trouble here for Amorim. Gone again. Or, I say again, was she gone already? No, she wasn't gone already. I, I take it back, uh, Eduardo. But uh, definite two-minute suspension. She got the arm. I'll tell you, Rodriguez is an absolute speedster. She is so, so fast. Leaving at the end of the season, they will miss her. Goulden, Torstensen, Kudea. Little fight in there on this side, but the ball's already on the far side. Varzaru! Nice goal! Gets herself wide, keeps the arm high, and a score for first of the goal, first of the game. 36 already. Didn't look 36 when she jumped there. Good bits now in the left back position. Heidi Loka gets a little shove, then looks around to say, "What was all that about?" Ball to Sulan, ball to Gurbitz, Gurbitz, Kovacic, Kovacic to Konetnikova. Ball is moving quickly. Gurbitz, what can she do? And it's a timeout call by Ambrose Martin. And 12 to 12 with 45 seconds left. 
and a minute 13 on the power play left for Buducnos. Let's look for the last attack. One situation. Pivot outside. One and two there. One and two there. We start there. We start there. The two by two. Oh, Gorbao, Missy try to take one more player. And after Missy, here push one by one against this three in this side. And you, you look the second. Help outside and ball for Yana. If not, cross and go around, go shooting and all of you also want more helping. And Eddie, after the two and two, you run. Well, I have to say, the two coaches are so, so supportive of their players. It's great to, it's great to hear. Such a difference when you think of men's handball and the coaches are screaming blue murder at them. Kovacic, Sulan through, great save, Rubicic. And they break the ball, still 58 seconds left on the power play. They've got some time. They've got some time. Well, would you believe if they go in half time, a goal to the good, because that's the way it looks at the moment. They will play all the way through to the end, I think. Keeping it uh, just the ball moving, making sure they all get a touch. Kudea, here's Bella Gould and ball to Rodriguez into Manea. Penalty, says the referee, with uh, no time remaining on the clock. So it will be Bella Goulden to score her eighth goal of the game. Good decision, Brochs inside. And Grimsby with a chance to keep it tied at 12s. With no time left on the clock. Whistle goes. Goulden scores! And the lead for Bucharest. 13 to 12. Grimsby, well, turns down the lip. Not happy that man has masterminded an unbelievable first half lead against a team that many thought would just walk away with it. Not right now, they're not. Half time in the Papalazzo Arena is Bucharest from Romania, 13, Gior 12. And you're probably wondering how that all happened, but uh, this Bucharest team is riding the crest of a wave and sometime all, sometimes all it takes is momentum in sport. And right at this moment in time, it is with those fans and their team on the court, playing all in black, of course, but uh, they're so passionate, uh, they fly the blue, yellow and red flag. Well, we're going to take a little break. We'll be back in just under 15 minutes' time for the second half, so do make sure you join us for that. In the meantime, for the moment, it's goodbye.
Plaza Arena in Budapest, Hungary for the gold medal match second half of the Women's CHF Final for 2016. The game between CSM Bukuresti and Gyor uh, from Hungary and the score stands uh, one goal advantage to Bucharest and just the final words of advice being given to, uh, by Ambrose Martin to his team. Nothing in it really, uh, of course a goal, but the scoring percentages and the saving percentages of Bucharest are so high that you wonder how it's only a goal in it, but this Gyor team are really, really, really strong. Uh, uh, two minutes suspension for Torstensen in the first half and two two-minute suspensions, one for Amorim, one for Groth, uh, that was for Gyor. And uh, it meant that the Bucharest team was able to score two goals when they were a player up, but they have far more technical faults uh, on the Bucharest team. <clears throat> If you've just joined us, Bucharest are playing from left to right in the second half. They're all in black with the white trim. Uh, Gior are in um, green with the white trim. A minute to go. That's Asfalvi. She's not going to play today. Remember, she injured herself yesterday. If you didn't see it, a one-goal win for Gior got them to the final. And with uh, a really, really good defence. But uh, Ambrose Martin won't be... He won't be overly displeased with the defensive display, but there were times when they could have been tighter. And you would expect that in the second half, that should tighten up considerably. The first uh, game today was a bit of an exhibition game, the bronze medal match between Vardar and uh, Budutschnost. A two-goal win for uh, Vardar gave them the bronze medal. 30 minutes between uh, one of these teams and uh, the trophy for the Women's Champions League, which has gone a bit old school again and looks beautiful. We just saw a close of it there on camera during halftime. It is Gjord in defence at the start. They're a player down, so it is... Knedlikova, Heidi Loka, Broch, Groth and Kovacic who are defending the five-man wall there, the five-woman wall. Grimsby still in goal and then the attack lineup for Bucharest in the uh, in the black is uh, Fisker from the left, then Torstensen, Bella Goulden on eight, and top scorer in the Women's Champions League this season. Rodriguez outside her on the right uh, back position, right hand up, has to be careful with the attacker fouls, dropping the shoulder, and it's Varzalu on the right wing, Manea still on the line. Look at uh, Knedlikova stepping out, then stepping back in, the shot comes from Bella Goulden, but it uh, bounces high and over the bar, and there's five seconds remaining on the power play. Gurbic comes on in the left wing, and Suland comes on in the right back position. So they've gone for the kind of lineup they had yesterday. Three centre players playing in position one, two, and three from the left. Gurbic on the left wing, Kovacic on the left back, and Nikki Groth in the centre. Groth didn't have the best first half of her life. Little switch with Kovacic, then with Sulan. Sulan all the way across to Gurbic, who probably wasn't expecting it. It was a bit low. And now Kovacic, Sulan, the handles of the pass of play. Gonna have to shoot soon. They do. Across and off. I don't think she got a touch on it, uh, uh, Grubisic, uh, Grubisic, but uh, it hit the post and came out. Rodriguez with the ball, goes one on one with Amorim, who's come on in the defence. Broch is calling at uh, Groth to go out high on Bella Goulden, but they stay with the two players. Now the ball behind, she loses it, but a foul. And they didn't really need to touch it there because they'd gotten around her, and Bella Goulden really telegraphed that pass into her. Manea couldn't hold it, but Broch had fouled her, Torsonson on the ball. No sign of Lini Jorgensen after yesterday. Maybe the uh, effects of her knee injury telling. Uh, Rodriguez tries to break through. Good defence. Rasmussen wanted more there, I think. And she turned them inside out. But uh, because she can't get the arm open, you see. And uh, Brock hits her. Amorim hits her. It was two on one and she couldn't get it. Torstensen to Manea. This is going to be a penalty no matter what happens. Correct decision. Romanian fans are happy, they want two minutes as well. Manea doing a really, really good job in there. Cam says Ambrose Martin, they've been here before. They know what happens. Yeah, it's a great decision by the referees. Ava Kiss against Bella Goulden. Same result as every shot, except the first one she took in the, first, in the second half. Oh, there she is, 9 from 10.
but just missed a penalty today. Missed one, a first penalty miss yesterday. Well, she was meant to miss one in all of the Champions League. Kovacic, switch of Gudovic, who isn't doing that much. Amorim, that looked awkward. Ball from Solan, the shot, but blocked by Torsten, off over the end line. Corner ball for Dior. Nedlikova calls for Sulan to come down. Kovacic to Sulan. Nora Murk joining them in that right back position next season. Amorim, oh, she doesn't go for it again. It's not like she's not moving very well. Not a good save from Grubasic, but easy shot that goes across her and high. And good, uh, good of it's having a little chat with her while we're watching that, telling her to just keep recycling the ball, just keep it moving. Heidi Loka. In number two, defending, just on about nine metres now, comes out to make sure Torsenson doesn't have a run on her. Brock has a hand on Manea in the line, Bella Goulden with the ball to Rodriguez. Two goals to the good. Varzaru, Goulden, great movement again. Look at this, oh, great defence from uh, Kovacic. Smiles from Bella Goulden, knows she could have released that early to Varzaru. Varzaru winks at her, lets her know, yeah, don't worry, I know you know what I'm saying. Here we go, Rodriguez arm around from Brock, there's the ball, Varzaru over the chop. Grimsbo made herself big, Rasmussen can't believe it, 14-12 still the score, Amorim all the way to Kovacic. And you can see there, Varzaru couldn't get back, no one covered for her, or they tried to, but couldn't get there. Great counter-attack and handball from Gior brings it back to one. Kovacic, Good goal, ah, that's nice waiting and just puts it past the hip of the goalkeeper. Rubisic has no chance. Well, it could have been three up if Varzaru had put that one away, but it turns quickly to only a one-goal game. Manea, good movement again, Brock is out, but instead of uh, instead of watching the run, oh, that's uh, good defence. Instead of watching the run, she's watching the ball and uh, Torsenson's got a chance then, but uh, in the end, Knedlikov uh, and Heidi Loke do their job. It's got to be tough on these girls. They've played a uh, big, tough game yesterday, maybe less so for Bucharest. And Rodriguez, ball over the top, nothing. Great defence from both Kovacic and uh, was a Nicky Groth in there with her that stopped. The ball comes to Amorim, Amorim with the ball, ball out to Kovacic. Kovacic comes back around now to Amorim, Amorim to Groth, looked awkward again. Waits for Knedlikov, it doesn't come, they just keep recycling the ball. The shot, oh, it's a terrible shot. I think she knows it herself. And it totally fooled the goalkeeper. Amorim uh, brings it back to parity. This has got to be the worst shot you've ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> and it goes in. But they all count second goal for her. But it was real awkward. And it totally fooled the goalkeeper. And I'm just looking at her. She's... Uh, Got a wry smile on her face. Anyway, <clears throat> Bucharest with the ball. Rodriguez, Goulden, good reverse pass. Goulden, she's so fast with the ball in her hand. Nice movement, oh, hit! All the way through to Varzaru. They want passive play, they get it. Torsenson to Rodriguez, hit again. Down goes Varzaru, down goes. Groat, down goes Rodriguez. It's like a game of bowling in there. <clears throat> they have passive play. Referees have called it, Manea with the ball, Goulden plays it to Torsen, 11 metres, they've got to call the whistle now. Up goes Rodriguez, still passive play, say the referees. Now they're looking at each other, will they give them one shot or one pass on a shot? Let's see what happens, they want them back three metres. Great defending from Yor. the fans now screaming, up goes Torsenson. Ball is lost, Grimsby looks, can't find anyone, eventually finds Amorim. Amorim looks and finds Kovacic, Brock stays in on the line, double line now. Grote, Kovacic, the two centre players in the centre, but Brock makes a way off, and on comes, uh, on comes Gurbitz, and Grote comes off, and on comes Sulan. So Kovacic playing in the centre now, all change. Maybe keeping Grote for a, a key point later in the game, just to conserve energy. Sulan plays it quickly. She gives balance to the team, but not an awful lot of effective one-on-one. -on -one or, oh, the shot again. This time goes in again for Amorim. Found her range. Not another one that's going to be going in the highlight reel. Three from six. But uh, like I said, they all count. Wrapped her arm around, and the two-goal deficit has become. Well, it was more than that, uh, a one-goal lead. No, it could have been more than that. Jorgensen, ball moves quickly to Balagul and hit by Brock. And Brock 
is just uh, making sure everything's where it should be. Bella Goulden knows she's been in a bit of a fight there and they're just checking on her nose, making sure it's not bleeding. Arm comes up, bit of everything going on there and it was just the last flick of the hand. Good defending, tough defending. And uh, yeah, that's a little stinger on the nose, isn't it? And uh, not Bella Goulden's fault, she's got to go for the shot. You're leading by a goal. Turnaround is not complete yet. Seven and a half minutes gone in the second half. Bucharest in control of the ball. <clears throat> Bella Goulden calls it. She wants Varzalu moving. Here she comes. Will she go in second line? She does on the far side. Jorgensen, poor ball into Manea. Manea's got three people to turn. She manages to find it back to Goulden. What a save by Grimsburg. What a save by Grimsburg. <laughs> Will we see it again? In the meantime, ball breaks down to Govace. Save by Grubasic. Fight over there between Fisker and uh, Knetlikova. Fisker wins it. Breaks it to Torstenson. Torstenson to Varzaru. Varzaru to Jorgensen. Ball to Bella Goulden. Bella Goulden, Torstenson. But it's all too slow. Poor pass. Now Jorgensen. But hey, ah, great goal. Just kept it alive. Just kept it alive. Enough for the ball to make it into Manea. What a passage of play. That's a great ball into her. But the first save from Grimsborough was absolutely brilliant. She's no chance there. Manea very effective on the line. And Grot comes back on, and she goes to the left-back position. Kovacic stays in the centre. Strange enough that she's going away to... Uh, she's going away to Ferenc Varos next season. And uh, here they come again. Gior, oh, they've lost the ball. Good win by Fisker. Oh, they've just... Suland and Heidi Loka have just hit each other in the head. And uh, who's got the hardest head? I'll tell you, Suland's got two hands to her head. And Heidi Loka, look at this. Oh, oh, that's not pretty. Oh, God, no matter how many times you see that's not pretty. Oh, oh Heidi Loka, just, <laughs> she's, woo. I mean, they're really going to be checking the... Uh, Oh, Sulan is just saying, how hard is Heidi Loka's head? And it wasn't even her head that hit her, it was her nose. And uh, Heidi Loka's up off the ground, tough as nails, a warrior in there. And Sulan, well, she's just still making sure her head is on her shoulders. I don't think she's okay. She's, uh, she might be seeing uh, four people carrying her off there. She's just looking up to this, uh, probably seeing stars. It was a real bang in the head. No matter how many times you saw it, it didn't get any nicer. <clears throat> Which means that uh, Nikki Groth looks like she's going to step over into the right back position now to take her place. While well, they just checked that Sulan is okay. Which means they've lost their penalty taker at the moment as well. And uh, Knedlikova Groth, Kovacic, Amorim. Gurbic stays deep. Gurbic, I think, yet to score today. Here's Amorim again, now here's Gurbitz, doesn't fancy it. Kovacic, nice recycling, good speed on the ball. Good speed again, Kovacic, look at the way they change the defence, but the shot from Amorim is poor. Good defence in the end, just to step out and like give it a little hit. Broch is back on, Gurbitz is off, Jorgensen, Gulden, Torsensen breaks past Loka. Ball is, ah, oh, brilliant Loka, brilliant Loka, brilliant Loka! Score! No! What was she doing? Spinner after doing all the hard work. Look at this. What was she thinking? Well, she's such a. She's the type of player that just buries it, doesn't try to do anything fancy normally. And on the one chance she has to. Oh, Jorgensen's lost it. Jorgensen has lost it. Kovacic, Groth, Rodriguez came across, but Groth wasn't for stopping. And in fairness to Rodriguez, she could have come across and hit her, but thought better of it. And, uh, well, the mistake was from Jorgensen. Look at that, just leaves the ball behind her. Kovacic picks it up, plays it to Groot. Groot walks past uh, Rodriguez and gets her first goal of the game. 16-15, tiredness will play its part. Torsensen, Jorgensen, Jorgensen loses it again. Looks, Heidi Loka, but Kovacic wasn't gone. Varzaru just had her covered enough. Look at Yvette Broch all the way in there. Amorim back to Groth. 
Rhodes, our oh, lovely ball of Kovacic doesn't fancy it, and it's an attacker foul by Yvette Brock in there, and Ambrose Martin is looking on as if to say, what's going on? And, uh, well, he's happy, although you might not, you might not look at there, but uh, just too many mistakes for Jorgensen, too tired, and um, the coach has uh, given her the hook. Rodriguez comes back on, looks far more mobile, looks far more dangerous. Golden Rodriguez, one on one, that's a shoulder again. No attacker foul. Down goes Groot in the area. Golden and Brock into Manea, lost. Great defense, Amorim and Loka over there on Manea. And they. They crowded out the pass to the line player. They realize now how dangerous Manea is if she's got that much uh, sp uh, space on the line. In the meantime, Rasmussen decides he's going to take a time out to have a word with his team, having lost another few balls and Gior suddenly in the lead. Let's listen to what he has to say. From standing still and moving in places. We need to move and then take the ball and then keep the ball moving. We are dribbling too much. Pass, pass, and pass to create the rooms, okay? Right now, we are making them go too wide. Please, you change with Carmen right now. Yeah, you're saying? Yeah, when I go too wide with you, I run too hard in the cross. You put between two and three. Well, between three and three. Like Anna to cross the Yeah, yeah like Anna like does the cross. I run, and I will, uh, Linnea will come in across. Listen. And you have one against one. Friends, listen here. Listen here, in offense, it's about that we are not afraid to shoot from nine come meters. On. Come on! Come on, come on! Come on, come on! Come on, we're going to see! Because if not, they will see the second chance, okay? And they will move the pivot, go one side or the other, two by two, and one by one in the other. The same. They have to make one more pass. And that's it now, Nika. Yeah, that's one of his, uh, yes, one of his adages, uh, Ambrose Martin. Make them play one more pass. Then they may make a mistake, or at least make the, uh, the shot much more difficult for whoever's taking it. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Rasmussen said something that David Davis said yesterday, which is, come on, we can't be afraid to shoot from nine meters. You don't have to work the ball in all the time. Here's the switch they called. Torstensen, the shot from nine meters, but uh, a foul, says the referee. So it's a nine meter ball for Bucharest, but uh, that was the move they called. But Torstensen, instead of playing it uh, parallel to Rodriguez, ended up all the way over here on the right-hand side and ran out of the room. Our ball into Mane is a penalty. Heidi Loka caught inside, and Manea once again causing all the problems. Bradeanu makes her way on. Nice ball from uh, Torstensen to Manea. And Heidi Loka, well, you can see there, she's a good half a meter inside the area. Balagulden faced by Grimsba. And she scores it again. I mean, that's 10 goals in the game for Bella Gould. And if she's not named most valuable player here, well, who could be? It's between, it's between uh, she and uh, Heidi Loka. <clears throat> Another goal for her, 10 in the game. But maybe they won't give most valuable player to the top scorer of the tournament as well. Grote, Amorim, Amorim, nice ball, but she's hit by Torsten on the way through. And the referee called a free before the ball went into the back of the net. The whistle had gone, so the goal won't count, even though, well, I'm afraid to say the goal was, the ball was already there. Anyway, or at least in the air, need to just uh, hold off maybe on that whistle there. Kovacic, in fairness to them, they did apologize. Kovacic plays it into Heidi Loka. She wasn't waiting for it, and the ball was too quick. And it bounces off her head. Comes out to Bucharest. Martin, Torstensen, Bradeanu. Your back. Now they push Martin wide again. Torstensen. No chance for Brock to get on. It's Grote and Amorim in the middle. Bradeanu, Torstensen, hit again. Bella and that's an attacker foul. Free in, says the referee. Bella Gulden's down. Kovacic makes her way off. Bella Goulden is down while she's winded for sure. Kovacic, well, if you go by the way, if you go by the way attacker fouls are given, uh, or have been given in this final four, that is as clear an attacker foul as you're ever gonna see. 
Whether I necessarily agree that it should be an attacker foul is beside the point. The fact of the matter is it's going to be a 9-meter ball at 16 to 16. Ambrose Martins just giving out the final... Uh, the final bit of advice to his defense. Rasmussen having a little chat with Torstensen. Here it comes again. Bella Gundam knows she's been hit. She's... Uh, Ooh. Just making sure there's still air going into her lungs. She was wounded by that. They get the ball. Now she's back, she's moving, and she calls the move with uh, Rodriguez, who comes off the ball. What's she going to do? Bounces it, plays it to Gould, and he loses it. I think the wind's been knocked out of her sails. Heidi Loka looks for Brock. The great ball to Gurbitz. Gurbitz to Groth. Gurbitz didn't fancy it there. I think Brock had a chance to go through herself and in the end didn't uh, fancy the chances either. But uh, they keep a hold of the ball and Kovacic after the bind she took when uh, Goulden hit her is back on in the centre. 16 to 16, not so many goals after half time. Remember it was 13 12 to Bucharest. Ah, it's a nice goal. That is a nice goal. Goalkeeper's gone. She puts it to the other side. Good movement. Nice shot, Amarin. Looked like she was up at nine. Lovely shot. No chance, Grubasic in goal. No chance at all. And a 17 16 lead, which means five for Dior in the second half. Only three. So eight goals scored in 15 minutes of handball shows how tired. And just as I say that, 11 goals for Bella Goulden, pulls them back level again, but the ball's already gone, it's Nick and Groot, ball out to Knedlikova. But they're back, they're back. Bella Goulden has a good fight there with uh, Amorim, holds her up. They're back uh, in defence, they're back to parity, Broch is off, Kovacic is on, Groot goes back to the centre, Amorim the left, Heidi Loke has been quiet the second half. Gurbitz has been uh, anonymous, really, in the whole game, both yesterday and today. Kovacic almost fell over the nine-meter line there. Nika Grote, that's a nice ball. Amorim's through. What has she gone for? What has she gone for? Grubasic read it again. She tries to get back, hasn't the speed. Martin does! Martin puts them ahead. 18 to 17. Second goal of the game for her. And the speed with which they broke, no chance. Gurbitz, who looks, to be honest, disinterested out there in the left wing, and really is one of the big players in Gior, has to show a little more. I'll stand on now in the left back position. They've gone for the uh, the combo that did so well for them yesterday. Knedlikova, nothing stopped on the line, no foul. Ball breaks, Bella Goulden, Bradeanu, plays it back to Goulden again. I think she travelled, so does Ambrose Martin. He calls for calm heads in the defence. Rodriguez is on in place of Goulden, who really looks shaken after the shift she's put in. She needs a little breather. Torstensen on in her place. It's uh, Bradeanu on the left. Up goes Torstensen, that's a terrible ball. They really have lost a little bit of power now, Bucharest, and they're making a lot of technical fouls, a lot of turnover balls under no pressure. Kovacic alone again, down to Loka, who is alone. Not have they done it again! Every chance they get, they're going for a lob on Grubasic, and she's just sticking up a long arm. Hello, goodbye. And it is so unlike Heidi Loken not to bury it, particularly after the fast break she, uh, she missed, not to go for the power there. And Bucharest, well, the lead keeps changing hands. It's been a two-goal turnaround, 18-17. Bradianu, Torstensen, Rodriguez. Oh, foul in there by Manea. Absolutely bowls over Amorim. And back she goes, no reaction, Broch off, Kovacic on, Amarin off, Alstad on, 
and the Gure fans find their voice again, but they haven't had much to cheer about because uh, their team is not exactly doing it at the moment. Alstad Kovacic to Grote. What a nice ball! Opens up, it's a penalty and more! Got to be! It's a goal, says the referee. It crossed the line. Heidi Loke is down, and there's no... Well, I mean, I think somebody's... It was a goal. The referee signaled it after the last... Now, that is two minutes for Torstensen. Goes for the shot, hits twice. Hits her twice and rolls it. She still almost kicks it out. Hits her twice. It is a goal. It was fully over the line. 18-18, Heidi Loki gets her seventh. She's still four behind Bella Goulden. But uh, I'll tell you, Torsonson was lucky. She's already on a two minutes. She's lucky she didn't get a two minutes there because this is crucial stages of the game. 18-29, 40% save for Bucharest. Only 18% for Grimsbo. Penalty, says the referee. What? It looked like she was giving a... A free throw, the goal line referee. Then, for some reason, a word in her ear, something changed her mind. And... Make up your own mind, Bella Goulden against Grimsbo. And she scores another one, 12 goals for Bella Goulden. She really is a star. And she's the star performer today. 12 goals for her of the 19 that have been scored by Bucharest. That's over half the goals. Martin steps out looking for a little sneaky one, doesn't get it. Grote, Kovacic and Altstad in the left. Gurbic, what has she done today for her team? Absolutely nothing. Altstad. I wonder would he play her in the centre at all. Here she comes, ball back, that's all she's doing, a give and go. I'll start again to Grote. Hit goes through. Nothing again, says the referee. Decides to blow the whistle early for the foul on Grote. Kovacic. Alstad. Oh, poor ball by Alstad. They've lost it. Kovacic, the hand is up for passive play. That's a little early as well, but losing the ball caused that. Kovacic, Groot! No! Oh, what a goal! Nicky Groot! Look what it means to her! It's only her second in the game. Grubasic can't believe it. Passive play call, one step, bang! No chance, Manea, no chance the goalkeeper. That is... That is what you want from your star player at crucial moments of the game. When it looks to be going away from the attack of Gior, she comes up with that. Bucharest, 19 Torstensen! Oh, oh, they've called an attacker foul against Torstensen. And I think that uh, Ambrose Martin called that from the bench. Clever coaching, little smile to himself, because I think Torstensen just goes hell for leather. Probably she'd shot earlier, it wouldn't have been called. Maybe something else happened I didn't see. 19, 19, nine minutes remaining. Great game. Well, exciting, let's say. Here she comes again, Paul Deloca! Does what she does best! She turns her inside out! And then, absolutely no messing this time! Look at it! Loka, ball, spin, no chance! No chance, Jorgensen! And does what she does best and scores the goal to give them a 20 to 19 lead. The lead changes hands once again. Rodriguez, Bradeanu, ball to Belagul and Belagul to Rodriguez. She's one on one. Tries to go back inside. They could have stolen it. Brock hits her, but it comes back out to a nine meter ball again. And Bella Goulden, well, you got to hand it to her. She's been everywhere today. She's taken all the banks. She's got 12 goals, but she's still going strong. Oh, Bradiano traveled. Well, everything, the tiredness, playing two games in two days is catching up. Rasmussen can't believe it. Well, four steps is uh, four steps. Groat, Amorim, Interloka, hit someone's feet. No, says the ref, hit the top of her leg. Ball is played on, Brock is off, Amorim is off, on comes Kurovic, on comes Alstad. 
Nothing won, nothing lost just yet. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Gurbitz to Alstad to Kovacic to Groth. Low down, manages to hold on to it. Heidi Loga comes on the wraparound. Here she comes. Now she wants something from Groth. No, back to Kovacic. Here comes Snedlikova, handles up a passive play. Groth again, do they see it? Do they see it? No, they don't. Hannes Silla for passive play. Crowd want more, nothing in that. Timeout call by the coach before anything else. I did hear a whistle. It was from the table. And Ambrose Martin, realizing his team is going nowhere fast, decides to call a timeout. Let's listen to what he has to say. Hey. Missing the right back. The ball is in the middle with you. Look the ball there. Look there. Okay? So. You go this side first. Yes, KD middle, middle and stay. And after come here, you make Finta. Finta go and away and outside. outside. Okay? And you in this side pass directly and Gorba. In the small space you have to shoot. Okay? Because we are in passive. Okay, yes. Remember to draw the shots if we can in the defense about taking this less little step up. It's Nike Kroot now. It's Nike Kroot. So either we take her away and you have to handle Amorin and Kovacic, or you really go close to her. When she has the ball, she's gonna pass to Luke or go by herself. So wings. Well, each coach trying to read what the other team might do. It is incredible to listen. They've only got a minute to uh, make the decision. They're still in pass of play. Heide Loka Grot and Knetlikova. I think she's been asked to take the shot regardless of what she's got. Here comes the ball, or maybe it was uh, Alstad. I don't know. Grot comes this way. This is the shot. Gurbitz misses it. Rebound is Fiskers. Well, it was good if it's the ball came to, and he did say to her, regardless of how much space you have, you have to shoot, we're in passive. So, good defense there from Bucharest. They've got the ball again, Bradianu in the left in the left back, Bella Goulden in the center, here's the switch, ball to Rodriguez, nobody fancies his shot. Manea moving all over the line. Martin comes back out again. Bradianu almost loses it again. Goes down under pressure from Amorim. Well, they're just running out of energy at the moment. Uh, Bucharest, uh, Ambrose Martin wants passive play. He's not going to get it. Not just yet. Here it is now. Rodriguez hits her with the shoulder. Hits her with the shoulder. Shot from Bradianu. Saved from Grim. Uh, goes wide. Ball breaks to Groth. The defense from... Uh, Gior just stepped up a notch ever so slightly. Amorim wide left is open, open, open. Wide right is not. Amorim's got the see. She's two on one. Brings it back inside again. Goes again. Hit on the way through. Kovacic hanging around down there, doing absolutely nothing. And somehow no one manages to give her the ball. It's incredible. Amorim should have seen that. Ambrose watching on is absolutely well. He's calm, and I don't know why he's so calm. Gudovic goes back down into the left again. And now, Rasmussen talks to his team, talks to his players. He's still talking to Bella Goulden. Bella Goulden nods, she understands the crowd, just giving that little bit of energy maybe to Gyor. The uh, Bucharest players call that they've got home court advantage, they said about Gyor, and actually it does feel a little bit like that. Alstad, Alstad, oh, oh, Nicky Groth drops it now. Ball to Kovacic, sidesteps, now Groth, Groth around the corner! Oh, she does that so well. Third goal, she does it so well. Two goal lead. And that is, at this crucial stage of the game, absolutely massive. Look how well she does it. No chance, Torstensen. Wraps her arm around it. No chance, Grubasic in goal. Two goal lead to Gior. Bella Goulden doesn't deserve to be on the losing team. Oh, look at this. Oh, she had no space, Martin. But she made it. Third goal for her, a meter is about as much as she had, but the jump was good. Kovacic just a little slow to get back. Martin wraps her arm around it through the hands of Grimsbo, who just opened them at the last second. 21-20, 21-20, a final to grace DHF Final Four here for the women.
Alstad does the same little bounce again. Oh, stolen by Valeo to catch, just rip the ball out of someone's hand like that. In fact, we saw a penalty given in the uh, in the first game, or uh, yeah, the first game yesterday when uh, Varda was playing with Utsnos. I think we saw a penalty for right to which was something similar. Alstad in the center, Groat, Alstad, what's he going to do? Not going anywhere. Now the switch to Groat, ball to Kovacic. Oh, Kovacic, sorry. Now, uh, hand is up a pass to play. Shot from Alstad, easy save. Uh, Grimsbo doesn't have that in her armory, the same as uh, Nicky Groat does. Torsten said, look how high they are. Now they change. Brock had come out on Bella Gould and Bella Gould had moved off the ball and the reaction was for Loka to follow her and Brock to come back in to the 6-0. Now Rodriguez is on and Bradiano is off. Torstensen, Torstensen stays on. Martin D. Fisker makes the move. Knedlikova stays with her. Bella Goulden, Torstensen outside, lovely ball, attack a foul, no! Goal, says the referee. Nice play by Bucharest. Nice goal, Bella Goulden. 13 goals of the 21 scored by her. Alstad, Groot. Oh, what a game, 21 to 21. Absolutely nothing in it. Brock takes a break. Gurbic takes the ball off Alstad. Amorim comes on, yeah, they need a bit of height in there now. Amorim, what can she do? She was the one who made the save, uh, made, scored the goal that gave the two goal lead, but about a minute remaining, two minutes remaining yesterday. Kovacic, ball. Amorim, she's alone. No, she's not. Now she plays it on. Play on, says the referee. Ball to Groot. Save, Pessoa. Suddenly Pessoa's in goal, and she stares at the ball as if to say, Did you think you were going to get past me? Well, it was right down her throat, in fairness. Oh, Bucharest, well, they, they must be in dreamland here. 27-16 gone in the second half, 21-21. Goulden. Fisker, Bradianu, Amorim steps out, ball is behind Rodriguez, Goulden again. Goulden again, ball is to Martin, but Kovacic this time gets back, Goulden. Good recycling, have they lost it? Double dribble, not called. Here we go, Goulden up, shot! It's, is it saved? It's saved by Grimsby. Unbelievable. Off a of deflection. And they take control of the ball again. It's end to end. Crowd is on the feet. Amarim, what was she doing? Oh, my goodness me. She had the opening, delayed the shot. And in the end, the shot was poor and Pessoa saved it. Well, there wasn't much to save. The ball was so slow in the end. Amarim didn't fancy it. It's all about hearts and minds now. Who's got the oxygen going to the brain? Who's got the bravery to take on the hard shot? Rodriguez, Torsenson hit by Brock. Great defending by Brock there out on Torsenson. Read her intentions, was out at nine. Hung on to her. Here's Bella Goulden, the danger woman today. Look at Brock out again. Look at Rodriguez, nowhere to go. They go backwards. Pass and play called. Brock and Torsenson. Rodriguez tries to break through. Brock holds her. Lucky maybe to get away with it. One minute, 20 seconds remaining. Time on the clock, says the referees, waiting for the floor wipers to come on. The poor floor, were, no, they haven't been on at all today. There's the uh, foul that wins the free. Brock doing an amazing job in on defense. She's out on Goulden now. Rodriguez waiting for the ball from Manea. Still passive play, she's got the shoot. Bella Goulden does, save Grimsbo again. They pressured the shot. One minute, 12 seconds remaining. Who could be a coach in this game? Who could be a fan in this game? Because, well, I'm looking at the Romanians. They're just delighted with themselves. They can't believe they're still in this game. But the uh, Gior fans, well, they're not quite biting their fingernails, but they might as well be. The Hungarian uh, hall speakers are hugging each other here off camera, hoping they'll be announcing a Hungarian winner. Grot, Amorim, Amorim to Grot. What does she do? Sidestep held up by Bella Goulden. 25, 30 seconds, 33 seconds left on the clock now. 21, 21. It's all about the goal now. It's all about the goal. It's all about the goal. Save! Penalty! Penalty! Oh, my goodness me! She's given a penalty! Oh, my goodness me! What a call! With 21 seconds left on the clock. Oh, lost the headphones! It is a penalty! 
Chelsea. That's a great call from the referees. It's a classic call. Gorbitz, she's done nothing all day. Now she has a chance to be the Queen of Hungary. He can't watch. Sir, turn around. It could be a big moment. Look at Vesola. She's out. Gorbitz. Gorbitz fakes it. Gurbitz, who hasn't shown a leg when it counted, stepped up with a big penalty. Oh, yes. Let's listen to the coach of Bucharest. It's about the pressure with Anna. Here we go on the line. I want it from the left side. We go like we train, okay? We have to go over here. Okay, I start over there. You start there, what we do, you go over, then, and then you come in the middle. from Ambrose Martin. 15 seconds left for them. You've got to make fouls, make fouls. No problem. Rasmussen, what's he got in store? He's gone for seven on six. Might as well lose by two <coughs> as lose by one. Dior, by the narrowest of margins, in the lead here. Ball to Rodriguez, to Goulden. Around comes Fisker. Fisker, Rodriguez. Are we going to extra time? We are! We are! There's four seconds left. What can they do? Two seconds remaining. Time and goal by Ambrose Martin. Oh, what a goal. Torsenson, what a goal. Oh, she only had one up until then, but that one bangs it in. Look at this. No chance, Amarim. Ten meters. Oh, took a deflection on the way through. And Grimsworth, no chance. Time and goal by Kjord. What's good? What's good, game? It's feeling yeah, good. Yeah, it's not yeah. okay. Okay. But it's not. It's not. Let's try a shooting. Yes. Try. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Gorba. Gorba, you. From the middle, shoot something like that, okay? The floor, go. You cannot go. Well, this game is going to extra time, which means uh, two by five. Well, you've got to hand it to Rasmussen. He knew he was last throw at ice, and uh, in fairness, uh, right here, uh, Martin knows there's no time left on the clock. He said, "Just go for something, uh, something a little bit funny." Could they? They couldn't score with uh, what? Are two seconds, three seconds left on the clock. Man-to-man <clears throat> -man defending, not allowing them any space at all. Here comes Kudovic. She's going to shoot it. Oh, no chance at all. Good defending from Bucharest. We are going to extra time in what has been a pulsating game. You could tell the girls were tired towards the end, but somehow they found the energy to play those last couple of minutes. And with 15 seconds left on the clock, Bucharest turned to Torstensen. She had the power left in her arm and from 10 meters made it 22-22. Incredible game of handball. And <clears throat> Pardon me. What were the chances that Bucharest could even be in this game? But it just shows you with Bella Goulden and the team, 13 goals, you've got every chance. Just give us a chance to uh, take a little break now, not for too long, maybe 30 seconds or so. Have a little drink of water and we'll be right back to you with the first period of extra time live in the Pop Plaza Arena. Well, if you've just joined us, you are uh, live 
Well, we are live in the Papalazzo Arena for the final, the gold medal match of the 2016 Women's EHF Final Four. 13 goals for Bella Goulden, eight for Heide Loka, and then it's fours and threes. We can just see the impact they have had on the game. But Torsten Summer two, she came up with one at a really crucial moment, and that was a goal down with a few seconds remaining. She jumped from 10. Look at the second half scoreline. Only three goals each in the last 10 minutes. I mean, these girls are out on their feet. Look at the middle 10 minutes, four to two. Incredible, incredible. <clears throat> so what are they gonna try now, Joe? What are they gonna try, Bucharest? Everybody sitting down has been playing. Everybody just taking a little break. Well, uh, just for your information, two <coughs> excuse me, two periods of uh, extra time. This was the goal that your thought had won them the uh, Champions League trophy. But with 15 seconds left, Rasmussen used uh, the timeout to bring on a seventh player, and the seventh player was Fisker, but it was Torsten's and he jumped, and an unlucky deflection was uh, went past Grimsbo, and it's the least that Bucharest deserved, maybe, that this game goes to extra time. Well, there were tears in the uh, Papalazzo Arena from the Hungarian fans who couldn't believe that they'd let victory slip from their grasp. Well, that's handball, and you, uh, you've got to defend right till the last second. So two periods uh, of five minutes each of extra time, and after that we go to penalties, and, uh, well, penalties, as you know, it's uh, five each, and then it's sudden death. First one to miss. I said, when I say first one to miss, I mean if the other team has scored, obviously. But uh, let's hope it, well, let's hope it does go for that, actually. I love a good penalty shootout, but uh, in the meantime, it's uh, two times five Romanian fans. Ups, they, they, I don't think they can believe this. Because this team, Bucharest, was a team that nobody gave a chance coming here. But that guy, Rasmussen, is obviously uh, some player or some coach because he's got the best out of this team and he's got them really moving well. He's got them playing well. And uh, you can see that uh, they're not fully back at full strength, Ambrose Martins' team, but they did well in the quarterfinals against Farns Varos. Then, of course, a one-goal win yesterday against uh, Buducnost. You wonder how much that took out of them. Still lacking maybe a right-back, uh, a really strong shooting right-back. When they had Buladovic here, they looked really, really strong. Look at Torstensen. Can you believe that she's the one who stepped up at 33 years of age? She does stand at 1 meter 90, so she's got the power, but I uh, hadn't seen her do it all day. And then just when it mattered most, up she goes, scores the goal. Sora now on in place of Grubisic, moving to Varda next season. Grimsbo looking on, just nodding. How much will the crowd influence the final 10 minutes of this game? Just the power that they can generate for their team. Will it bring them uh, something special? And time, uh, the whistle is gone. Heidi Loke is just taking a last drink of water. On she comes. She plays 60 minutes in every game, and now she's got to play another 10. Groot with the ball. Amorim, Groot, Kovacic, Amorim, Bjorn Green. Opens the scoring. Amorim, one against one, no chance. Bella Goulden came across, but uh, wasn't going to get anything for that. Bucharest, keep the ball moving. Rodriguez, out to Martin. And there's uh, a little bit of afters between Nick and Groot and Rodriguez there. No love lost. Look at Nick and Groot. Giving her the glare. <coughs> Rodriguez, Bella Gulden, Torstensen. Rodriguez, good movement. Uh, Martin, that's an attacker foul. Doesn't get called. They lose the ball. Nine-meter throw. 
Well, I think Martine is down, but I think Martine came in with her shoulder there. The uh, medical crew have been called on. She looks like she's in a bit of distress. Just keeping an eye on her there. She's just getting a little bit of ice on her face. Comes around at such speed. Uh, Cardamom. And she's complaining, saying that she was hit. But I think that she hits, uh, she hits Groot with her shoulder. Bam! <clears throat> That's just my call. It's all happening so quickly out there. Difficult sometimes for the referees to see absolutely everything. And particularly if they happen to be on the other side of the court, it, it can be quite difficult to see. So, Bucharest still in control of the ball. Bella Gulden, Rodriguez, here goes Manea, they miss her out, up goes Torsonson, saved by Grimsburg. So the uh, the goal scorer that uh, drew the game didn't have the power to beat Grimsburg, but took no deflection that time. Amorim, Gurbitz, Kovacic. So Gurbitz now able to dictate some play. That's a lovely ball. Ball into Loka, who's pushed. <coughs> Excuse me, pushed out by Bella Gulden. And uh, Heidi Loka taking her time getting up off the floor, not as quick as she did at the start, but uh, looks fresh enough. Kovacic now back in the centre. Gurbitz back in the left wing again. Amorim. Kovacic. Knedlikova moves in second line. Here comes the ball to Amorim. The block was by Knedlikova. They mended up in each other's way in there. Groot, Amorim, what did she do? Took too long out of the ball again. She needs to just shoot. And uh, just up front of me on the bench, the, the coaches and the uh, team are saying the same thing. Just throw the ball. Groat again, what can she do? Ball into Loka, turns left-handed. And there's trouble here for somebody. Bradianu and Heidi Loka is uh, in a bit of uh, distress on the ground. Like she's really hurt a rib or something. No, she's okay. Bradianu gets a two-minute suspension for this. And, well, I think the fact that, uh, I think the fact that Goulden came over was the only reason why it's not a penalty. Bradiano, two minutes, just when they don't need it. Six on five. Can, can Dior find an answer here? They lead by one in the first five minutes of extra time. And a two-minute suspension now is tough. Here she comes, Knetlikova, under the leg of Pessoa. First time the ball really came to her in any kind of room. And she makes the decision to go low. She's good height. And under Pessoa, no chance. Pessoa goal, the two-goal lead for Bjorn. Two minutes, 44 seconds left in the first period of extra time. And it is a power play for Bjorn. Here is Fisker playing as the Libero. Bella Goulden, Martin, Goulden, Torsenson, Torsenson, Goulden, Goulden. Look, no one in front of her. And look. Fisker stays on, but now they could be in trouble, so they lose the ball. Great defence from Brock. Ball is played to Martin. Martin, look at Loka hanging on to Torstensen. Ball to Fisker, handles it for pass and play. Manea loses it completely, but the referee gives her a foul anyway. She went to grip the ball, and the ball kind of flew away from her. Look at the face of Pessoa. She's absolutely disgusted about something. I don't know what it is. Torstensen hit by Groat. Groat does a good job stopping her. They just need a shot here, and they need a big shot. Can Bella Goulden do it? Manea, referees tell them to get back. Here's Bella Goulden, sidestep, ball to Martin. They've lost it, they've lost it. Shot, Grimsbo, free throw again. They're holding on to the ball. They've had it for at least a minute with 20 seconds of passive play. A lot of latitude been given here to, by the referees to the Bucharest team on this passive play. And they won't be tanked by the Gior defence if they score from this. Martin steps off into the centre. Here's Manea. Torsten's with the ball. Three around them. Ball is lost and they have lost it. Finally given. Overplaying the ball. 21 seconds left on the power play. And two goals to the good. Gior. Gurbitz into the centre, calls the move. Amorim, outsider in the left, where we'd normally see her. Here's the ball. Oh, she has to go for the goal herself there. She's straight through, but somehow plays the ball out to the wing. 
intercepted. Well, I think it was Rodriguez, either she or Martin, but whomever it was, 30 seconds left on the clock. The two minute suspension is over, and Amorim's missed a great chance to put them three ahead. Makes a bad decision. Locus high and Torsenson. Bella Goulden, Brock hits her. Torsenson again. Brock follows her. Ball to Martin. She goes for a lob. Hits the crossbar. Comes down to Loka. Loka breaks it to Groats, who plays it to Gurbitz. Gurbitz, quick ball to the centre. What's he going to do? Into Heidi Loka. Another poor pass. Loka wasn't ready. Fast break. Kulea. Time is up. Doesn't count. Calm, says everybody, including this commentator, who hasn't a voice left. And he still has the winning ceremony to do. But two goals to the good after the first period of uh, extra time. 52 seconds left in the break. Gior. Scored twice. Bucharest didn't score at all, but will be thankful that they didn't go further behind when they were a player down. Well, at this stage, the coaches have to keep it simple because the players... It must be difficult for the players to take on any kind of instructions at all. They're just playing on instinct at this stage. Five minutes between your winning <coughs> and other Champions League. They're third and fourth years, which sets up a bit of a dynasty at this club. Remember, they won in uh, 2013, they won in 2014. Missed out last year, but this would be their third title in four years, which, as I said, would be a little bit of a handball dynasty and puts them as one of the powerhouses. Now, the table officials told them to move quickly. They had to change ends. And uh, that means now, Bucharest are playing. Bucharest are playing uh, from right to left, all in black. It is 24 22 to Gior. It's the second period of extra time. And uh, Bradiano will change with Manea, I think, when the time comes for defense. Let's see, does that happen? Gulden one on one with uh, Loka. Torsenson with the ball. Oh, great goal! Great goal, Torsenson. Drags them back into it, but the ball was broken quickly to Groth. Ball, Heidi Loka turns. Out to Kovacic, she plays it, holds on to it. Everyone sits down, which means you can finally see what's going on. But Gior broke quickly there, but uh, Bucharest managed to get back. Manea's off, Bradianu's on, Rodriguez is in the number two position on the far side, facing Amorim. Well, they know each other well, compatriots. Here goes Amorim. Oh, that's unbelievable. Well, we're not going to see it again. The decision is the decision. One minute gone. Bucharest wanted a two-minute suspension then for uh, throwing the ball away. Didn't get it. Torsenson, Goulden, Torsenson, Brock out on her. She tries to play past her. Goulden doesn't have the energy anymore to try and break through. Does she have the energy to shoot? Rodriguez. Now it's got to be passive play soon here. Brock, one-on-one. On one. Bella Goulden, what a ball! What a ball! Did it hit someone's foot? No! It hit, well, I don't know what the referee's called there. It seemed to me to hit someone's foot. And uh, suddenly, the ball ended up in uh, Gior's hand after one of the Gior players had stepped inside. We're not going to see that either. One minute 42 gone in the second period of extra time. 24-23. Kovacic, Grot, Amorim. Here comes Knetnikova. Here comes... Uh, Good bits, Amorim, Groth. Good recycling, but going nowhere. Amorim, Kovacic, Groth. Is there a gap at that time? Nicky Groth! Oh, wonderful Nicky Groth! Fourth goal of the game, and it's just a one step. Rodriguez had no chance, neither at Pessoa. Two goal lead, 25 23. Well, Bella Goulden at 13 goals needs to pull something out of the fire now. 
They really need her. They really, really need her now. Bucharest, they are out on their feet. Mane is fighting with Amorim in there in the line. Rodriguez goes, loses it. Foul, says the referee. Nine meter ball. Torsenson, Goulden, ball, Mane turns her, scores! Pulls another one back. Now Rasmussen's calling for two minutes, unsportsmanlike if you ask me, but Mane, a great goal, great turn. And I think that Amorim lets her go. How could he call for two minutes there? It's a one goal game, 25-24, and there's only two minutes remaining. But it's like the game itself. Nobody quite able to pull away from the other team. Jor, just staying, noses ahead. Have they got what it takes? Kovacic and Groth screaming at each other, calling the moves. Here comes Kovacic, here comes Groth. Ball to Amorim. What's she going to do? She goes alone, takes the shot. Pessoa saves it. Hand is up for passive play, and it's uh, a nine meter ball for Kjor. Heidi Loka, Kovacic. Groth, Amorim, oh, she's hit early by Martin. Nine meter ball again, great defense, Martin. Bucharest, the whole bench on their feet. What can they do? Heidi Loka is to move over a little bit. The clock is stopped. 113 left on the clock. Green in control. Green, a goal up. Green with the ball. Amorim's got to shoot. Now nah, they've lost it. What is she doing? Unbelievable. Pessoa breaks it to Goulden, Torstensen, Goulden again. Rodriguez almost ran, came back. Oh, the pressure, too much to bear. Penalties looming, Fisker's on. Torstensen v. Brock takes the shot nine meters. And Pessoa's off, Fisker's on. 45 seconds remaining, maybe a bit early for that 7 v. 6 play. If Gior win this ball, it's going to be a game over. Torsenson shoots, she's hit. Oh my goodness! Oh, two minutes, Amorim. Torsenson a heap on the ground. Amorim's off for two minutes. Oh, hits her. Oh my goodness me, what a tackle by Amorim. What was she thinking? She's off. Torstensen is down and out at the moment. What was Amorim thinking there? Second two minutes of the game. Absolutely the correct decision by the referee. They're going to play this game without any timeouts, as far as I know, these extra times. 33 seconds left on the clock. They're going to play. <laughs> Well, the floor wipers have finally got something to do in this game. They're going to play 6v5. And to be honest, Bucharest just have to hold on to the ball and wait till the gap opens up. No ball to the line, don't try it. Wings will open up somewhere, absolutely. Torstensen back on her feet, she's had a great game. Bella Goulden, Rodriguez, how long is left? Not long. Bella Goulden, Mane is open now. Rodriguez, oh, she doesn't fancy it. They want traveling, they're not getting it. Bella Goulden's gonna go for it, no. Now it's open. Martin, what a save! Penalty, penalty! Oh my goodness me! What has happened? 10 seconds remaining. Let's have a look again. It could be right. Martin came between one and two. Oh, it's a hard one to take. She does take her there, but the arm is free. The shot is taken. And now, Bella Golden, one penalty missed the entire, the entire championship all season long. Fakes Grimbo. So she scores. Six seconds. Ball breaks. Gurbitz hit. Ball lost. Play on. And the time goes, and it's 25 to 25. And the penalty from Bella Gould and 14 goals for her on the day brings it to a penalty shootout. Oh, would you have a final any other way? Voiceless, no energy left. Cannot believe what I've just seen. Big, big call here in Hungary for the referees to give that final penalty. You question it, you see she definitely hits her on the way through.
but it's an early hit. Martin keeps going, has the arm free, saved by Grimsbo, but that's the way it goes. So, comes down to this, five penalties each. Who has got the best goalkeeper? Which team has got the most nerve? And Rasmussen is laughing with his team. Look how relaxed they are. And he's after saying, oh, thank you for that, Georg. He's after saying, Bradley uh, Varzaru decides. She takes the final penalty. And the pressure may be on Georg. Because Bucharest was, uh, they were all laughing. Now, the end has already been decided, as far as I know. The only thing left to decide is who actually takes the first penalty. Uh, it's five apiece. If there's no winner after five, then it goes to sudden death. Player is named. First team takes a penalty. If they score, the next team must score to stay in the competition. And uh, the five names are being given to the table official as to who takes the penalty. Now, I have to say congratulations to all the ladies here in this final today. In fact, in the whole competition, because to play two games in two days is tough. To go to extra time in the final is really tough. And now to keep that nerve for the penalty shootout is absolutely devastating for whomever loses. If you just join us, you missed a cracker. <laughs> Excitement right to the final second, literally to the final second. A penalty given to Gior draws them level 25 to 25, and we are now in a penalty shootout. What are you watching? You're watching Gior versus Bucharest in the women's EHF Final Four gold medal match 2016 at the Pop Lazlo Arena in Hungary. And this is, well, it's squeaky bum time. That's what it is. It's uh, it's all nerves now. If you hold your nerve, I mean, what do you do in a penalty shootout? Here's my advice: go low, go hard. No, no fancy shots, no broken wrists, no nothing. Because if you miss one of them, well, you'll be remembered as the person who lost perhaps a gold medal for their team. So. It looks to me like, ah, oh, thankfully, it's my end of the court. I'll be able to see the penalties. All the players must stand behind the halfway line on the opposite side of the court. So away to our right is the goal. No players made their way down yet, goalkeeper or shooter. You've got to make sure at this stage as well that you, you don't uh, foot fault on your seven meter shot. Goalkeeper, of course, can come anywhere up to three meters from the ball. So there's a little mark in the uh, in the area. You'll just see it there. Grimsbo's just run past it. She is entitled to come all the way out to there. That is exactly three meters from the seven meter spot. There it is there. So the seven meter spot just inside the dotted line there. As uh, Bella Goulden steps forward, penalty queen, out comes Grimsbo, three meters, the fake, and a score. Bucharest won. Your nil as we speak. Nice penalty from Bella Goulden. And uh, they did a study about uh, penalty shootouts, and they basically said the team that goes first normally wins or has a higher percentage of wins. Kovacic versus Grubasic. Great goal, and the crowd greets that. It's one to one. And they basically said that the pressure that's exerted if the first team should score causes the uh, the second team to have a lower percentage of wins. <clears throat> Martin, the left hand and the right winger, steps up against uh, Ava Kiss this time. Martin fakes one. Oh, great goal. Oh, 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 oh. oh that was oh the little Spaniards. Oh, that was a good, that was a really good penalty. Oh, Pessoa playing mind games with Nikki Groot. Referees don't like that. They tell her to step back. Nikki Groot. Well, she's a powerful shot. Out she comes. Look at her moving. Look at her moving. What can Grote do against this? She can't do anything! 
She misses. Pessoa gives her the stare. One miss for Gior. It's two to one in the penalty shootout. She went under the legs, went for a clever one, and Pessoa didn't have to do anything because it hit her. And Nikki Groth, when she's got such a powerful shot, you wonder why she didn't go for some power there. Grimsbo back in against Rodriguez now. Ooh, oh! Oh! Well, she tried just about everything there and eventually flung herself forward. Three to one, Bucharest. Pessoa tries it again, the stare, playing the mind games. Heidi Loka won't even look at her. Look at Pessoa go, what is she like in go? Oh no, Heidi Loka misses. Pessoa is absolutely, well, she's just really, she's just completely uh, phased them here. And uh, if this goes in, Bucharest are the most unlikely champions in the Champions League this season. If they score, they win. They're the champions! Bucharest from Romania have just won the Women's Egypt Champions League. Bravianu! Oh, what a goal from her! And only fair that a Romanian should be the one to step forward and score the goal. Gior did their best, played their part. Missing a little something, you might think. But this team here, against all, against all the odds, have lifted the Champions League trophy. Devastation on the faces of the Gior team. But look at Rasmussen, went for a month to Varner, 16 days, in fact, as a consultant, was let go, ended up at Bucharest, started the project. It's in its infancy, and there he is, <clears throat> a Champions League winning coach in his first season with the club. It's a fairy story. It's an absolute fairy story. And look at those Romanian girls. They, I don't think they can believe it themselves, but they were so, so good defensively. Bradeanu and Torstensen. That rock in the middle made all the difference, really, to this team. But well, that one there, Pessoa, I mean, she's a little bit crazy, even by goalkeeper standards. But today, she did the old Bruce Grobelar in the penalty shootout and uh, completely blew the minds of at least two of the penalty takers for Gior. And it didn't really matter that uh, they had a couple left to take. They could only have scored three maximum, and Bucharest had scored four. Well, look at that, Campiones, Campiones. All, so many of their fans who came carrying uh, flags of Romania, they probably cannot believe it. I have to say, everybody speaks at the start of a tournament, oh, everybody can do it, and this, that, and the other, but actually, there's always been a fourth team at these final fours. It was Mitzen on the first year. I, um, the name escapes me of the team last year. Uh, it was uh, Dinamo Sinara last year, the fourth team. And to be honest, most people thought uh, Bucharest was the fourth team this year. But in point of fact, turns out absolutely not. They were the team that uh, came through unfazed and after extra time, and after penalties, they are the champions. Well, Bella Golden not only gets uh, a winner's medal, like I said at the start, she is Bella Golden. She will also be uh, named as the top scorer of the Champions League. And no doubt, and no doubt she will also be, uh, well, she could very well be named the uh, MVP. Bitter heartache for Gior, but uh, I think even they knew that uh, it was going to be a tough Final Four. They've got a good team, but probably not the best team they've ever had. But this team here, I mean, you've got to just say that uh, they did so well.
good balance, good teamwork. They're kind of like the Leicester City of, uh, of handball at the moment. <coughs> no one gave them a chance, and yet here they are, the champions. The trophy and a gold medal is waiting for them. Unbelievable support from those uh, Bucharest fans over that side of the arena. Really, really unbelievable. Well, it was a great game. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. I know we did here. The uh, prize-giving ceremony is uh, about to start. I'm sure every household in Romania has got this one on now because... Uh, Unprecedented, I think, is for a team to come to their first ever major season in the Champions League, to come through it the way they came through it, to have lost twice to Gior already this season, to have lost twice to Vardar already this season, and yet when the time came in the final four, they were able to turn those losses into victories. And there's not more you can say about a team than that they're able to learn. And isn't it an old coaching adage, adage that sometimes you learn more from your defeats than you do from your victories? And, uh, well, this team certainly seems to have done that. They are absolutely delighted. Fisker's taken off the headband. They troop off. Edith and Andras will be uh, announcing uh, the winners very, very shortly. I think it starts with the uh, top scorer of the tournament, that will be Bella Gulden. And uh, then we will uh, announce the most valuable player. Then, of course, uh, Gior will receive their silver medals, and finally, uh, it'll be the gold medals for Bucharest. And then the raising of the uh, trophy. Can't be easy for the two Hungarians. And thinking like a couple of minutes before the end, uh, it was Gyor that were going to win it. But look at that: 39% saves versus 24% saves. 66% scoring versus 46% scoring. Well, the final score says 29-26, but that's uh, adding on the penalties. It was such a tight, tight game. And look at the amount of turnovers: 21 to 10. And, uh, well, that two-minute suspension for Amarim was costly at the end. Isabella Gulden, 14 goals. The hall goes into darkness. The laser show starts. And the dancers come on one more time. Well, there is the Champions League trophy looking resplendent on the plinth, and uh, well done to Chalice and the violinist there. I thought that was brilliant. I'm a big fan of ELO, and that uh, gave me a little bit of uh, some uh, goosebumps there, I have to say.
just that style. Of course, the other trophy we saw earlier, I was thinking that we were going old school, they were showing, but it must be for top scorer or for MVP, but uh, whatever it is, that is the trophy that all the professional athletes of handball for women want to lift. It is the Champions League trophy. It is the 2016 event. And I gotta congratulate once again the Hungarians for an absolutely brilliant and third brilliant in a row EHF Final Four for women. It's been absolutely tremendous here. Really, really, from, from the crew, the staff, everybody involved from the Hungarian Federation, it's been absolutely brilliant. And this arena, 12,000 strong, 12,000 people packed in to watch women's professional handball is brilliant. Well, I'm just trying to figure out exactly what the what the announcers are saying, but uh, according to my schedule here now, it is time for the top scorer to be read out, and I think we already know that it's Bella Gulden, who with her 14 goals today absolutely blew everyone away. Here we go. Yeah, they're going to award the medals in a few moments, but uh, like I said, it's going to be the top scorer. And uh, as if things weren't bad enough, that Bucharest won in the, in the Hungarian Hall. Here we go. Balagulman well over the 100 goals as top scorer. And look at that smile kisses to the crowd she cannot quite believe the day she's having and i have to say i'm delighted for her look at her go wonderful wonderful player always smiling the sweet brilliant to see and what a top player she is too and how good was she today ran out of puff towards the end but when it mattered most she had it and uh, she's just standing as we're watching highlights from uh, her goals of the season She's just holding aloft the uh, holding aloft uh, the ball in the cage or in the glass case to show that she is the top scorer of the Champions League this season. And there it was there, just being handed over to her. Congratulations, Bella! Really, really delighted for you. Well, I think the uh, MVP of the tournament has gone to Grubasic. Well, I think it's deserved, in fairness. Her stats over the two games have been really, really, really good. Really good. So well done to her. Yelena Grubasic, MVP of the Women's EHF Final Four. And it is she who gets that beautiful trophy. Bella Goulding gets a ball for scoring over 100 goals. She gets a trophy. Go figure. But I know, congratulations, it's brilliant. Bucharest really have shone in this tournament. So they've taken the top scorer, they've taken the uh, most valuable player, and, uh, well, they've taken the goal too. But before that, it is time to hand over the silver medals to the Gior team. So, Monsieur Jean Brio and Arne Elvson, uh, Elvson are coming forward to uh, present the medals to the runners up, first of all, of the EHF Final Four 2016. <laughs> fans remained after the uh, final whistle there they uh, seem to just disappear but a good handful have stayed and remained you know to applaud their team on but I'll tell you one set of fans who haven't left and that's the Romanians 
But a uh, bitter disappointment for them. They did their best. I mean, they did really, really well. But they just couldn't hold on. They just couldn't quite keep their noses in front. But you got to say, Ambrose Martin is still one of the top coaches. But now you got to be thinking that Kim Rasmussen from Bucharest is definitely one of the top coaches, if not at the very, very top at this moment with this team from Bucharest. But for now, it's uh, the girls of Gyor. No shame in coming second in the Champions League. In fact, it's a brilliant, brilliant achievement. Gurbits, Amorim, Kovacic, Sulan, Knedlikova, Heideloka, and so many of the young players, Tull, and so on. They'll all get their medals, and congratulations to them. Heideloka, well, a little bit of, uh, no doubt, a little bit of Norwegian or whatever being spoken up there on the, uh, on the podium. I have to say, Yvette Brock was brilliant today, number 31. Really thought she was good in defence. And all the players have received their silver medals. It's uh, just time now for the coaching staff, the medical staff, to receive theirs. Never easy to get a silver medal, but I think when you look back uh, in years later, it's uh, you, you can really appreciate your achievement but so used to, uh, to winning winning Champions Leagues, it must be difficult for them to accept second place. But then again, when you think of last year and the hardship they had, it really was a uh, remarkable recovery to get to the final this year. Favourites coming into it, but in the end, couldn't hold on to win it. But uh, on the podium for right now are the silver medal uh, winners of the Women's EHF Final Four 2016, Dior from Hungary. Nice round of applause reverberates around the arena for the players. Lakatos, Hudak, young players, chances in the future. Alstad who came in, in January must be thinking, uh, well, that's not a bad, uh, bad year's work, or a couple of months. And now it's time for the real surprise package. That's what they're going to grab. The plinth is cleared. The Romanians are really, really giving it... Uh, giving it large, you might say, over on the far side. The gold medals have arrived on the podium. And look at every one of them. Well, every one of them from uh, Romania wearing the Romanian flags, Romanian scarves. They're such a proud sporting country, aren't they? But there's a few little Danish scarves in there as well. But it's Bucharest and it's the Romanians all over the stadium. They suddenly appeared from nowhere. They do the conga. Is that a conga line? I think that's a conga line. Well, not Rasmussen, he's too cool for school. He's not going to do that. He strolls on, it is a conga line. Manea, absolutely delighted. That is an amazing achievement. Frank at the Silva didn't play, but uh, no doubt they'll all get a medal. Look at Basoa. Didn't have much to do in the game, but when it came time, she did exactly what was, uh, what was needed. are being read out but uh, I don't think the players are even listening they're just so so happy I mean they're delighted with themselves oh man she was absolutely brilliant Rodriguez look how happy she is she's very happy isn't she all the remaining all the Brazilians I should say hanging around together there delighted Nice little close-up. They've got the champagne. I hope I'm not too close. I've got an interview to do at the end of the game. We're going to interview Bella Goulden. I mean, it has to be Bella Goulden. She was absolutely amazing again today, and uh, she'll have a gold medal around her uh, around her neck. Dak, she says. Well, the champagne's already started. Poor El Arna is getting soaked in there. 
as is Jean Brio. Probably won't be the first time the two of them have gotten a bit of champagne all over their new suits, but uh, you know, girls could have waited until the trophy was handed over. But I think they're probably thinking, enough already, extra time, penalties. It's time to taste some, some champagne. Oh, here they go. Fisker, well, the bottle's as big as she is. Now look at the size of that bottle in Fisker's hands. Jorgensen didn't happen for her today, but she was vital yesterday. Oh, pure delight for the Romanians. And there's Rasmussen. And there's Kim and Rasmus, I think they're called, together. And a little bit of thunderstruck. I think we're all a bit thunderstruck, to be honest with you, after what's happened there today. Well, it's been a great season for Women's Champions League. It really has. There's been some great team play. There's been some great uh, results. But in the end, only one team can lift this trophy. And in 2016, it's Bucharesti. CSM Bucharesti from Romania. They absolutely go wild. We are the champions reverberates around the arena. They are the champions, fully deserved. And from myself, Tom O'Brannigan, and all of us here on EHF TV, we hope you've enjoyed the two days handball. Remember, next week we're in North for the EHF Cup. But for now, we say goodbye. We may get a little uh, interview with Bella Goulden at the end, but from the commentary end, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it, and good night.
Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean that. Yeah, she tells me her name. Her real name is Bella Gouldien. 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 But today her name is Bella Golden. Yes, and it's really, really nice. This, this is awesome. This is the best thing I've ever experienced. <laughs> but you know, I have to say, uh, yesterday I said to myself, they're really good, but they don't really have a chance against you. What? How do you keep proving people wrong? I mean, you guys were amazing. You, I, I said today you're like the Leicester City of handball. No one gives you a chance and you win. Yeah, I, I really don't know what's happened. I, we, I don't really don't know. We just fight together and don't think we look at the, the score and we just keep going. And then in the end, it's equal, equal and then penalty. So. I think I might have said to you last night as well, sometimes your name is just on the trophy, right? Yes, and it is. Yeah, right yeah, now it is. <laughs> well, come here, listen, on a personal level, 14 goals. In the, uh, you were just amazing today, Bella. I, I, I really mean it. Top scorer. I mean, does it get any better? I mean, I know it's a team game, but to be the top scorer and to have this around your neck and whatever this thing is in your hand, it's, it's just been a great season. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, it has been a lot up and down. So uh, if you would have said six months ago that we would stay with this one, I wouldn't believe you. I would probably laugh at you. But now, when we are here, and yeah, we had yeah we had had such a two great months these last two ones, and yeah, then it's just amazing. I only have one more question because I know you want to celebrate with your team, yeah. <laughs> Kim Rasmussen. Forget about concept. Forget about team tactics. Forget about everything. When the penalties came. He was laughing with you guys. He was so relaxed. It was kind of like, come on, we've no. Yeah, but we made fun of it because it was the penalties in the Danish league uh, the other day. And so he was already preparing us. But like, if it is you and you and you and you, but we have great penalty shooters. Everyone takes them for the national team or for us. So, so it's really, really awesome. We, we, and the goalkeepers, they save, so. Well, Paso is completely crazy. I'm sorry, she's completely crazy, but it worked. She is, I've shot uh, <laughs> a lot on her and it's unbelievable. You cannot focus because she's so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very professional, Kim, well done. <laughs> uh, he's like, Kim, just come in very quickly, very quickly. At the, at the very end there, you were so relaxed for those penalties, you just said to them, hey, you take the last one, everyone was laughing. Yeah, but uh, if you think too much about it, then it's going to ruin all the experience and all the fun. And it is fun, this. So it's about relaxing, not being afraid of uh, losing and this. And we yeah, we had all the luck, but I think also we, uh, we uh, were great today. So um, You were brilliant the whole tournament. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And congratulations to you. Well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dak. Congratulations. That's great. Really thank good. You. Thank you.
Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, this, despite the absence of, uh, of Gure, I would like to start uh, this press conference now. So we have somewhere to go. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, because I think uh, Kim and Jelena are, um, you know, ready to celebrate. So um, first of all, I, I think I have to say this uh, final did not want uh, want to see a winner, so it actually needed uh, an extra time and seven meter throws to decide it. And I would like to congratulate uh, the 2060 winners of the Women's HF Final Four season book Bucharesti. Congratulations. Thank you, um, Kim. You took over this team um, not even a year ago. Was there a point, back one month, back two months, or at some point during this weekend, where you knew I'm coaching a potential Champions League winner? I knew from the beginning, but um, there were many things happening in our city and our club that um, made it impossible for me to try and make a team out of uh, out of these great girls but um yeah uh, we made it and uh, i think uh, i think actually we also deserve it because we have been through such a roller coaster it's unbelievable and to sit here with this medal around my neck it's just um it just proves that uh, we are doing something right and um I'm so uh, I'm so proud uh, to sit here, and um, I'm so happy for the girls uh, that they uh, won this this uh, Champions League this season. Uh, what a season! Um, I'm so proud for them. So, thank you. How, how did you experience the game? <clears throat> I can't remember it. I, I remember I remember Linnea scored in the last seconds, and I remember. Um, Gulden's penalty. Um, I do remember uh, that um, when it was extra time, I really, really tried to show the girls that take it easy and breathe and enjoy it. Um, I already there at that point f had the feeling that we were winners. So instead of making too much nerves about it, let's relax and enjoy it also in the penalties. Enjoy it instead of being afraid. and. Um, yeah, and the girls did amazing. Thank you. As I can see that um, Ambrosch and Kari are just arriving. We'll just wait for one second. Just take a check seat, grab some water. Um, Ambrosch, now that, now that you're here and you had a few moments to to think about this game. How do you how do you evaluate it? What is what's your rundown of this game of this final? Uh, first of all, uh, even in the losing losing a final four, I have to congratulate my team and my players instead of the winner. They will come in second place because you also you make an excellent job. But I think our team today, our players, not only today, I think during the whole season, make a fantastic job. And in this moment, it's very difficult to accept. And it's very hard to accept a, a defeat like this. Because, because uh, yes, we lost the, the final four. We don't have the, the third one, Saito, goes to Bucharest, but we didn't lose the match. Not this one, not the normal match, 60 minutes, also the extra time. And it was really painful in this way. But, but uh, we have to be really proud of our players, of our fighting. I'm really disappointed because of the result of our uh, this game today. Um, Kari, I can I can probably understand that you, you will be very disappointed as well. However, when you when you look back now that the season has has come to an end, what's your what's your overall summary of the of the season and of um, of this weekend? 
Um, I feel like we're ta taking really big steps with the team. Um, we have been fighting every day to get better. I feel like we're working really well together. Um, we set a goal and uh, after each match we, we want to develop and see what we can do better. Um, also, like Amros, really proud of the team and how the spirit of the team has been. It's been super. Um, Jelena, first of all, um, congratulations. This uh, trophy to your left um, obviously means uh, something. Uh, Jelena has uh, been named the uh, MVP of the 2016 uh, Women's um, EHF Final Four. Also, talk us a bit from your point of view through this roller coaster that that Kim mentioned. How was it? How was this weekend like for you from, you know, the moment of the arrival until just about like 30 minutes ago when you lifted the trophy? First of all, uh, thank you for the congratulations. And I also want to congratulate uh, Gior on a really fantastic game. I think the crowd really enjoyed in the match. What can I say? I'm really happy. I'm thrilled. Um, I'm full of emotions. This was our, like a dream come true. Uh, through all the season, we were fighting with a lot of injuries and with problems leaving players and we went to the quarterfinal from the fourth place in the group. So nobody expected from us to be here and to raise this trophy. But uh, I think we really played a great Final Four tournament and that we deserve to win. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions from the floor? No, <laughs> Kim Rasmussen, at the end of uh, March, uh, EHF was uh, choosing the candidates for All-Stars team. Your name was it uh, among the candidates to be the best coach. Uh, right now, is it also some of your personal, individual, symbolic victory of um, a bit more, maybe, estimated coaches? No, not at all. Uh, the five coaches nominated are fantastic coaches and Ambrose next to me I am admiring a lot. So I, I don't really care about this. Um, I like to stay a little private. So, um, so I'm just happy that I could help the girls in this club to win. But uh, no, the five coaches have done amazing. And in March we haven't done anything. But uh, maybe in the future they should wait until after the final form to make the the team but uh, no no they are doing a great job so they deserve to be there uh, i admire all of them and especially ambrosia on my side and if i can the second and my last question my last question uh kim what was the idea of withdrawing uh, jelena grubisic and putting uh, maisa pessoa at the key moment of the game uh, jelena was having a marvelous performance today. It was a tactical plan, what was the idea? You don't remember? No, or I remember. It was a marvelous plan. I, I remember a lot, okay? And no, she didn't save the balls that she was supposed to at that time, so uh, we changed her. Uh, well, we have always fun about this, so... Uh, no, we have great goalkeepers, and sometimes you have to take chances, and... Yeah, uh, as I said, that... Um, she was amazing. The trophy next to her proved that, but um, the team needed a little help from Pessoa and she, she did it in the end. Uh, and um, this is what a team is about. So um, everyone gives a little thing, uh, then you can make miracles. So um, today we did. Thank you. Are there uh, any further questions? No. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you very much for attending. Before everyone leaves, Biljana Blagueska, Vladko Arzov, Marta Kalai, you're the winners of our Women's HF Final Four quiz. You can pick up your goodies over there. Thank you very much. <laughs>